beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed I allow you to flow through me. Let my mind not be a limitation to my destiny. There is a voice that you have given me that my generation must hear. And everything that constitutes a limitation must leave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last week, we listened again to the message hallelujah that i had preached about allowing the kingdom of god to find expression and in that teaching i began to say how that the limitation of the impact of men is not the power or the ability of god but our mind from the realm where we allow our wills our emotion and our intellect to come under submission to the government of Christ and that if we can satisfactorily do that there is no limit to which God will be able to use us hallelujah Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 let's begin tonight I want to establish a few things and then we'll pray you make all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward that's what he's doing in someone's life tonight you God has no favorites in the kingdom. Listen to me. God has no favorites in the kingdom. God loves everyone in the kingdom equally, but he does not trust everyone equally. God has no favorites in the kingdom. But the operation of God, when you read the Bible, it makes it look as though God had a soft spot for certain people and he seemed to reject others. Until you understand the character of the operation of the kingdom, you may think God has favorites. God has no favorite preachers. God has no favorite businessmen. God has no favorite students. God has no favorite history makers. Every man is saddled with the responsibility of charting the course of his destiny and the degree to which we come into alignment with god's precepts is the degree to which it looks like god is tilting towards our direction 
It's very important that I say this. Because we live in a society that the difference is clear in everything. Among preachers, the difference is clear. There are men of God struggling and struggling and struggling to make impact. There are men of God struggling to do what they call ministry. In the world of finance, there are those making impact and there are those living as if God hates them. In the world of family life, there are others raising award-winning children. There are others raising armed robbers and cowards and thieves and, and nuisance to society. In the world of impact, there are those that the hand of God is mighty upon. They are shaking lands and territories. And yet there are others scrounging and scrambling for relevance. What is responsible for this difference? Could it be that God decided to choose others? Could it be that God just hated others? Is that really it? What would be responsible, brothers and sisters, for a man who rises up as a nobody? The map of your village not being on the map. And yet you rise to be a global phenomenon. Where people say, thank God you were born. Thank God you did not die. Blessed is the womb that produced this child. What makes that difference? That a man will be born a pauper with rain falling and yet at the end of his life he is a generational blessing. His name becomes an access key to favor. That every time you say I am associated with Sam, they say with Sam because of that access is given. What is responsible for this difference in society? It's not enough just to love God and know God and pray in tongues. A true apostolic ministry prepares people to be agents of societal transformation. It's not enough just to pray in tongues. The Bible never said you are the light of the church. It said you are the light of cosmos, the world. There is a level of impact and illumination that comes from the church. The key, the key to world evangelization is not necessarily evangelism as we know. It is evangelism but not one-on-one -on -one preaching and sharing tracts. We will never win souls that way till Jesus comes. The key to transgenerational impact and bringing territories to the submission of the Christ is hidden in one word, influence. 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 The mystery word that holds the key to compelling generations to come to the Lordship of Christ. Everybody say influence. Influence will do more than tracts will do. Influence will do more than crusades will do. Influence. At every given point in your life, your decisions, your values are being altered by someone you look up to as a role model, consciously or unconsciously. And therefore the key to bringing earth, our territories, cosmos, to the obedience of Christ is ascending intentionally to a position of kingdom influence that grants us access to the minds of people and that they can, by our influence, buy into our ideology which seeks to enthrone Christ as king. This is the gospel. The gospel is not just a message that saves sinners. The gospel is an ideology. Like a terrorist ideology. The gospel is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his purpose. First, that spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. Then, the influence of his jurisdiction across the strata of society. If we are not doing this, there is no reason why we should be alive. No matter what kind of conference, convention, impartation, if it does not lead to what I just told you, then it's a waste. The summary of all that I just said is called kingdom advancement. The intentional strategic frontiering of the influence of the Christ in the earth. This is consistent with the eternal plan of God. What is the eternal plan of God? 
according to Colossians, that all things be headed up in the Christ. And I told you that that plan of God, all mankind and creation will come to the submission of the Christ by a principle called the reflection principle. The reflection principle. An entity confers power on another as a proof of his might and royalty. The mystery of the sun and the moon. The moon does not have a glory of its own. It reflects the glory of the sun. If you want to see the excellency of the brightness of the sun, you look at the moon. The degree to which the moon aligns with the sun is the degree to which it, it shines. Hallelujah. Christianity is not just a religion to keep you busy until Jesus comes. Christianity is not just a religion to keep you until you get a job or until you graduate or until you get married. Christianity is an ideology. The faith life is an ideology. It's a movement. It's a cause. There is something we are doing. God has an intention in his mind and he expects every inhabitant in the earth to be given an opportunity to understand that. His emphasis right now is building his spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. And that's what we call being born again. The establishment of the reign and the rule of the Christ in the hearts of men. Not just coming for altar call. call. Altar call is not enough to get you born again. It gets you saved. But to be born anew and to be transformed, the Christ needs to be established in your heart. The degree to which the word of God finds expression in your life, the degree to which you have submitted to the principles of the kingdom, is the degree to which Jesus has become Lord of your life. Are we, are we understanding? One of the biggest limitations I, I taught us that there are two major limitations to the advancement of the kingdom. That the first, the Bible calls it the gate of hell. That is just a recap. And I told us that the gate of hell defines the scope of Satan and every arsenal that he brings. His tricks, his strategies that he brings to bring the whole world into deception. But that's not even the biggest limitation. The biggest of all limitation is the mind. Our mental alignment to the ways of the kingdom. This is what is responsible for your prosperity. This is what is responsible for your impact. This is what is responsible for the flow of God's power. Now, preachers have erroneously taught people. Every time you talk about the mind, preachers shift people to, they shift that topic to business people and entrepreneurs and, and um, um, proprietors and all those who have to deal with the corporate life. So here they are sweating and believing they are training their spirit. Whenever you talk about mind, they say, no, 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 it's, it's, it's all right. I'm not a businessman. The mind is the access point for the spirit to find expression in your life. You ignore your mental development. You ignore the alignment of your mind to the government of the Christ. You will fail in life in every respect. I can never change you until I change your mind. I can never change you till I alter your ideology because your life revolves around your thinking, around your perception about life. There's nothing I can do about your current situation until you are willing to submit your mind to something better. It's God speaking to us. So let's read Proverbs 23. Verse 7. Help us, Holy Spirit. One, to read. Just the first phrase. You don't need to read all of those ones down. One, to read. For as he thinketh in his heart or in his mind, so is he. It equates the summation of your ideologies to the quality of your life. Meaning the quality of my life as an ambassador of the kingdom, as a husband, as a father, as a leader, is dependent on my, the sum total 
of the ideologies that inform my decisions. Profound truth. Profound truth. That a man's life is helplessly at the mercy of his mindset. I've done many teachings about mindsets and I will not stop until a transition happens. The key to persuasion is repetition. Not information. Repetition. When a truth is repeated, it, it becomes a priority to you. And that's the goal of this teaching. God is doing a mighty work in your life. God is transforming mighty men in this place. And he won't stop. He won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop till his church looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop till you look just like him. You know why I must preach this? Because seated where you are is the destiny of thousands that have been connected to your grace and your life. And your refusal to rise will make thousands to go to hell. Millions to perish. Imagine if there was no Benny Hinn. Imagine if there was no Reinhard Bonke. Right? Imagine if all of the mighty men that have brought great impact in this generation did not rise. I refuse to let your tears stop me. I refuse to let your anger with me stop me. I will teach it until that transformation happens. You may not see a need to thank me now. But as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives. When you see the excellency of your life above that of your contemporaries. You will find a reason to say Lord I thank you. The training process is always difficult. Because mankind has been designed to live in a comfort zone. We are designed to live around an environment that massages our current level. But every time the word begins to come, the first thing that happens is your current mentality will resist it. Because it knows that it will have to choose to accept that it is wrong and change. And accepting faults is one of the biggest um, ego stinging things for mankind to say, oh, I'm wrong. I may not have gotten it well this way. So we prefer to excuse it away and remain. Friends live together for as long as they think together. The moment one begins to think above, the environment starts driving him away. Right? I'm challenging you because there's something about your life. Koinonia is an apostolic platform. Only with the eye of the spirit will you see the kind of mighty men that have been raised. There are more people. This crowd constitutes only less than 10% of the total people who will listen to this message. And so I'm speaking to nations. I'm speaking to individuals. I'm speaking to territories. Somebody will be listening to this message who is lying down at the end of his life and say, God, is this how my life will be? And God is saying there is a way out. The way out is not giving you money. The way out is not parting you when you do not deserve to be parted. The way out is to prune and build and to furnish. It may cost you tears. But let me tell you, anybody that loves you, see, a mentor, a mentor is not your friend. Are you getting what I'm saying? I taught the school of ministry students that there are three spiritual platforms on which reception and impartation happens number one a father and a son platform a transfer from a father to a son number two a transfer from a mentor to a mentee or an apprentice number three a transfer from a teacher to a student you cannot transfer knowledge from colleague to colleague no sir it's against the law of impartation that means every time you want to receive one must assume the position of the greater and another the lesser even if it is for the purpose of the impartation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So by the time, because many of us may watch people, if Pastor Jakes comes up right now to preach, I will not just stand and say, I'm the great man of God, he's my friend. No, I submit myself immediately to the grace that is teaching and immediately I begin to receive. Are you learning something? 
society will teach you otherwise that's why there are lots of failures outside let me tell you the truth i give you a guarantee if you listen to what i am giving you and you sit down honestly under these teachings you will never never be a disappointment to the kingdom i give you that as a guarantee but the problem is to what degree are we willing to submit ourselves to the dealings of god to what degree Every time we come to God, many of us come with our bag of errors and we sit down hoping that God will add to us. Sometimes he doesn't need to add. He needs to take from you because what you currently have is what is destroying you. There is an ideology that is resisting the power of God in your life. There is an ideology that is resisting the move of the spirit. There is an ideology that is limiting your financial life. There is an ideology that is limiting your ministry, limiting every aspect of your life. And when you contend for light and you receive that light, no power in existence has the capacity to keep you down. Not for too long. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As I walk around, as I travel around, I've had the privilege of traveling to different territories. I study culture a lot. In fact, whenever we travel for administration, if time allows us, we always take a little tour around the city to see the way of life of the people. I like to study how people think. I like to study what their priorities are. I like to study what, what constitutes a taboo for them. What is the scope of their ideology? And I am amazed. I see the reason why Africa is where it is. I see the reason why very few men out of a large crowd ever, ever, Touch the true grace of God in their lives. I see the reason why though many go to school and graduate, they end up failures. Failures from the perspective of the kingdom. Failures in impacting their generation and being relevant for the kingdom. I see why zealous people will start out well and end as if God left them. There is something that we consistently violate. And that is the power of transformation. The power of transformation. The power of transformation. I can't tell you this enough, Koinonia. Listen to me. The power of transformation. You can rise from where you are. I don't care what the limitations are. Stop regretting what you are going through and what your father brought you into or what your mother brought you into. And concentrate on the transformation that will bring you up otherwise you will sit in that position of regret and watch your children later join you that's what has happened we have a generation of irresponsible people spiritually irresponsible mentally irresponsible physically irresponsible there has been a transgenerational game of blaming people one generation blaming another for their failures one generation blaming another nigerians blame government africans blame their parents they blame institutions our refusal to turn and say what can i do to live where i am gideon was a little boy who was hiding he had of the miracles that happened and now he was there reduced and an angel appears to him and says oh thou mighty man of value can you be the changer of this pattern in a generation let me tell you something my message will mean very little to you and you will hate me if you are someone with a mindset that believes someone somewhere is responsible for your success and your advancement if you have that kind of mindset here your first assignment tonight is repent can we have the windows open i think the rain is hallelujah everyone say in the name of jesus i take full responsibility for my current position spiritually financially socially i take full responsibility and i am willing to pay the price to change that pattern say it one more time in the name of jesus 
I refuse resentment. I refuse blaming people. I make up my mind that from today, I take full responsibility for the outcome of everything in my life. That's right. That's the, the decision that begins to change your life. You say this among your colleagues and they will insult you. Some of you are even feeling nervous as you are saying this because it is very comfortable to believe your father is the reason why you are not serving God. That foolish man was a herbalist. But what of the mercy of God that has brought you to see the light? There are many ladies who believe it's the wrong training of their mothers that has stopped them from marriage. There are many people who believe. There are preachers. There are many pastors in different ministries who believe that the reason why they are not rising is because the geo or the man of God is not laying hands on them to do impartation. My challenge to you before we continue is that language of responsibility. Please pray in one minute. Say, Lord, I make up my mind. Pray, pray, open your mouth. Don't just pray in your heart. Willingly and consciously before heaven, this day, this day, this day, the 22nd of May, I make up my mind that from today, I begin to take full responsibility for the outcome of my life. If any change will happen, it depends on you and God. If your generation must hear your voice, it depends on you and God. Pray. 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 I choose to be different. I come from a family where no one has reason. Excuses here and there. We are from Kogi State, that's why. Excuses here and there. We are from the north, that's why. Excuses here and there. My father was a drunkard. My mother was a prostitute. I was born out of wedlock. Kill that excuse. It's a deception from the pit of hell. Manda kalapratigele boko soprandigere yata bahashara balada bara 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 bara. I'm a lady. That's why they should take care of me. Kill that excuse. I have failed. That's why I tried and failed. Kill that excuse. I gave God a chance and he didn't do anything. Kill that excuse. Hallelujah. Listen. Never try to waste your time. I'm giving you an advice that will bless you. Never try to waste your time investing in people who have not come to a point where they are willing to take responsibility for their lives. You will be casting your pearl before swine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Never waste your time and energy attempting to communicate truths to people who have not indicated a genuine passion for transformation. You will waste your time. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart. The summation of my ideologies. So I believe my father is a wicked man. Because he would have sold the car and given me the money. Because I had to fend for school for myself. And that ideology becomes your template of interpreting life. Hallelujah. Let me share a few things. Your mindset determines your response to God, to people, to Satan, to challenges, and to success. Your mindset 
your ideologies determines your response to God, people, Satan, challenges, and ultimately success. The Bible keeps telling us again and again. Solomon speaking again and again and encouraging believers of the need to guard our heart. God is in it. Let's look at that scripture very quickly. Proverbs chapter I believe 4 4 verse 23 Am I right? 4 verse 23. Let's look at it quickly. Yes. It says, keep your heart with all what? Diligence, seriousness, tenacity. It says, for out of it are the issues of life. Brothers and sisters, listen. Listen to me. Please look at me. I submit to you. I have seen people suffer. I have seen the bitter weep that the negligence to this truth will bring to any life and bring to any family you can choose to listen to what I am telling you and contend for change or you can stand where you are and watch life whip you until you lose your faith, lose your salvation and ultimately end up in hell is that serious keep your heart it is your responsibility keep your heart with all diligence for out of it out of your ideologies are the issues, the decisions that frame your life and destiny. Your mindset about culture, your mindset about women, your mindset about God, your mindset about money and prosperity, your mindset about increase, your mindset about hard work and diligence. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you. Wishing has never changed the life of any man. Wishing only, only gives you a false emotional consolation. Oh, I wish I would be anointed like Pastor James. Oh, I wish I would be able to do this. Oh, I wish that God will use me. I know he will use me one day. Forget that deceit. There is what you do here and now that makes you know whether you are usable or otherwise. Let me give you a little preview into the financial series that we're going to be having. In it, I teach on the power of decisions. Do you know the difference between a decision and a wish? This is it. I want to drink water. It's a decision. That's the water there. I want to drink water is a wish or a strong desire. I decide to drink water means I set it as a goal and I am ready to find out what it takes to get that water. Are you seeing that now? A decision is different from a desire in that a decision is backed up with the willingness to satisfy the conditions to get that result. Many people wish for the anointing. Oh, I wish, I wish. Many people wish for a big church. Many people wish for a million naira or million dollar status. I'm a millionaire in the name of Jesus Christ. No power will stop me. Uh, stories. This is why people look at Christian and think, they think we are idiots. Because we keep fooling and kidding ourselves again and again. Say, I decide to make impact. I decide to be relevant. I decide to do big things for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Guard your heart with all diligence. Why? Because your life is a reflection of, of, of your ideologies. I've taught this, but let me recap on it again very quickly. Remember I told you that there is a law the law of manifestation and that law is that your physical reality eventually becomes a reflection of your mindset 
the inner workings of your mind is what will eventually become your physical reality. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means your physical life is a revelation of the summation or the quality of your ideologies. By and large, your mentality about prosperity will show physically. By and large, your mentality about God and the principles of the kingdom will show. By and large, your mentality about marriage will show in children calling you a loving daddy or a stupid Dracula who is killing them. By and large. By and large, your mentality about success and productivity will speak otherwise. Meaning, our physical environment right now is a gradual reflection of the reality in our mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? Watch this. Compare a general overseer of a ministry or president or whatever. Ki or let me use a, a term that is now. Compare a CEO, right, of a company who sits down in a large office. You know how intimidating the office can be. With AC, flat screen, right? All kinds of things. Cup of coffee, tea, all kinds of things. And a secretary around. And you see the poor people in the company angry at their director, wicked man. He's the one enjoying. And the megad is there opening gates hundreds of times a day and receiving 10 or 15,000. And the megad convinces himself that the ogre is not fair. This man is not doing anything. He just sits down on a chair, signs papers, writes a few things, and he's getting millions. My challenge is this transfer them for two months transfer them meaning tell the may god we hereby give you this office is yours for two months and tell the ogre go to the gate the ogre is going to do something in that gate that will make people stop coming to the office they will start waiting at the gate there is a mentality are you getting my point he's going to look and say is there something we can do is there something we can do right there at the gate he will start consultancy services. Right there at the gate, he will think and say, how can I reduce this effort? How can I reduce the physical effort? And then he may create a chain or a rope where he just sits down and drive or try to make a digital gate. Are you seeing that now? Whereas the other man sits down holding one wood and metallic detector and, 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 and a, the keys, bunch of keys to a gate. Meanwhile, let's go to our man in the office there. The man is in the office and when he sits down, the next thing is he opens the fridge, sees apples, dates, all kinds of things and he says, my soul, find rest. He forgets. No, no, no. See how cheap his mindset is. He forgets that that company is at the mercy of his decisions and he's eating. And quickly he sees some little money and he carries that money quickly and hides it. And he thinks, what can I sell quickly? And they say, oh, God, generator has spoiled. He say, leave it there. In two months, that office becomes his mindset. Are you seeing that now? You come in and see it dirty, scattered. They've sold a lot of things. They've sold the company generator. They've done all sorts of things. Right? Workers are not paid. Whereas you find out that the the blessed man, the CEO, has changed the gate. And he will make it become something. What is the difference? Their mindset. They think the difference is money. They think the difference is expensive suits and expensive cars. No. Those things are a reflection of something. When you see a man mightily used by God, his life is a reflection of something. Are we, are we following? Are we together? The next time you see a man you consider to be anointed or blessed, do not envy what you see. Try to buy into their mind and transfer it to yourself and your life will follow suit. Are we blessed? That's why success is, is transferable. If I can transfer to you what is in my mind, you will be like me. But you will stop at my limit. 
if I can transfer to you what I have and challenge you to rise higher, you will be higher than me. You see that? Preachers preach out of the abundance of their mindset. A preacher who is not, for instance, an entrepreneur and knows nothing about leadership and organization has a pattern that he teaches people. All he would tell people is just pray and be serious. The God of favor, God of honor, God of this, the God who located me will locate you and the people shout amen. And they stop there and they become a congregation of weak and beggarly people. The preacher himself, not knowing why he's successful. He thinks he's successful because he's preaching. No. Guard your heart. There is a mentality you have right now that is stopping friends from you. There are some of you, you can never have friends because there are certain mindsets and ideologies that drive every destiny helper who comes into your life. Something about you resents people from you and if you do not take the time to study it and change and say i'm like that my mother never had any friend only me you see it the transference let me talk about two quick ideologies or mental attitudes that have sponsored failure in the lives of people right Number one is the mindset that bets what we know today to be low self-esteem. Write that word down. It's very important. I'm about to say something that will bless you. What is low self-esteem or what we call complex? Please look up. Low self-esteem is the feeling or the mindset that brings a man to a position where he believes or he is convinced consciously or subconsciously that you are not good enough that you are perpetually at a state of disadvantage that there is always something you need to do to your life to meet up to a standard a status quo are you getting my point it's a terrible mindset a terrible mental state of being because it produces dangerous fruits and we're about to see a few of them let me tell you the foolishness of many people in society from preachers to businessmen to fathers to leaders is motivated by this poisonous mindset subtle but dangerous low self-esteem what does low self-esteem do low self-esteem when it is matured in a man becomes the sponsor for an extravagant life becomes the sponsor for aggression and looking down on people becomes the sponsor uh, for downplaying people as a way of trying to show your relevance so all that fight for titles all that fight for recognition all that impatience that drives people into living an extravagant life is primarily because of a deep-seated mentality of low self-esteem. Are we blessed? So a lady believes that until she plants a particular kind of hair, she can be beautiful and guys will not see her. Wherever she got that ideology and then she finds out that the weave on is 15,000 and that becomes a goal. She's under pressure, borrowing money, trying to prove all kinds of things and then when she buys it and puts it she's hoping that now she has been able to attain a status quo it's god speaking to us so we have preachers with their clubs and societies right that is based on something they believe they have to do to match up so a man of god thinks i can teach but I can't prophesy. And his complex begins to sponsor him to look for prophetic grace anyhow. Are you getting my point? Even to the point of witchcraft. And when he gets it, he now believes that when that prophetic grace is added to me, I will be like so-so-so man of God. 
Are you seeing that now? A poisonous mindset. This is what is responsible for the hatred of brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers. A father will fight with his wife because the father believes that this woman is a CEO and I am an assistant director and his complex makes him feel do something to bring her down. Are we blessed now? Low self-esteem. A mindset that stops people from moving and taking the path to success gradually. Low self-esteem has been the reason for incessant impatience, especially in young people. They want to buy the car now. They want to marry now. Right? They want sharp, sharp money now. Sharp, sharp success. You want to start a ministry and in four months have a record-breaking 5,000 crowd. Low self-esteem to prove and you say, go and tell them in the village, God is at work here. You see that? Tell who? Them. That means there is a them you have been working for. There is somebody that you say, I must show this man that I am nothing. It's not enough reason. Is God helping us? Many of us have lost precious friends because of low self-esteem. Our low self-esteem makes us to interpret even a sincere compliment from a negative angle. Because you believe that you must do something to match up. Who is God speaking to tonight? We have all sorts of enemies and all sorts of people. I look at people who I know at the level I am now, I cannot even wear the clothes they are wearing and some of them are students. You know that God just blessed them and opened a small door for them. But that low self-esteem, especially ladies, sisters, say amen. Especially these ladies. You will see a tiny lady moving around. Self-esteem is pushing her and she goes to meet an un one big ungodly military officer. You know that she can destroy her life because she wants to say, I am going out with somebody in Jaji. Right? And that, oh, you think I don't know. You are joking. <laughs> is God speaking to us? There are many preachers they start preaching now and they say, Kai, if I go, they won't, they, won't, they won't know that. They won't acknowledge me. So let me start going on air. And the grace to go on air has not been released. So the resources to back it up is not there. And they keep yoking their members week after week. There are business people who start a business now and they say they want to do international business. They go and die in Italy or go and die in Brazil. Right? Low self-esteem. Being a motivation for many things. That's why you see preachers. Come, please. Look at men of God, for instance. When another man of God is about to see one, everybody is standing to see who will greet who. As a proof. Right? Meaning that the one who greets one is accepted. You see, we carry our villages, we carry our pain, we carry our backgrounds, mix it with the anointing, mix it with ministry, and off we go misleading many people. So he comes to me and then I cannot greet him. There are geos who will never turn and greet their people and just say, God bless you. How are you? No. Because if, how can I greet him? You greet my boy. You see that? Your village is haunting you. Your background is haunting you. A poisonous mindset haunting you. Don't just laugh. I'm, I'm serious, very serious as I speak here. There are ladies who believe they have to behave in a certain way to show they are not cheap. If, I, if you talk softly to guys, they will joke with you, give it to them and they will respect you. That's your mentality. So God brought your husband 10 times and you drove him 10 times. Because something in your mind, you live around the mediocre just like you in the room. And all of them convince themselves. It's amazing how we mess up and people clap for us. You do something very stupid that demands flogging. And you go and meet people who think like you. And they say, Kai, guy, you represented us. <laughs> Look, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Listen, listen. You can decide to make up your mind and change. Or live in that false sense of success. There are some of us moving around lying to people. Oh, we are millionaires. We are this and that and that. We are this and that and that. You carry your friend's car. 
you say it's, it's your car. You, you find that all of those things, some of us are sitting right now, aside from maybe you just beg somebody, the clothes you are wearing is not your own. The watch you are wearing is not your own. The shoe you are wearing is not your own. The phone you are using is not your own. You borrowed your friend's phone for three days. What for? What's the point? What are you proving? An Android device? Shame on you. If that becomes the whole circumference upon which your life revolves in, that mankind, we make ourselves too cheap. And so we do not celebrate what we are and where we are. We do not celebrate what God is doing in our lives. We rush levels. We are not thorough in the dealings of God in our lives. And we end up with casualties. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. That mindset of inferiority right now is what has made some people not to relate with certain friends that can help them. Because you think this person is a villager. My, if, I, if I react like that, no, 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 no. There are some of us, if somebody looks at you in the secret place and speaks his language, not just to mock you, but just a nice conversation, let's connect. You say, please don't embarrass me here. Please, I've told people my, my, I'm half caste. My father is from where and where. Don't come and, 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 and fall my hand here. Hallelujah. I once was talking to a preacher and he looked at me and I said, do I know how much his, his suit is that he was wearing? And I was shocked. In the middle of a destiny molding conversation, you stop me and ask me how much your suit is what? What in the world is that? I just, the anointing just lifted. I just knew that there's nothing to tell this person. Say in the name of Jesus. I am proud of my level. I will rise gradually. There's no point trying to fake success. I will pay the price and be successful. Hallelujah. Very important. Low self-esteem. Many of us here are suffering from it. It's what is responsible for gossip. It's what is responsible for backbiting. That spirit, that feeling of low self-esteem is the attitude that will sponsor your not celebrating the success of others. So the moment Mary says, I just bought a Jeep. Say, Mary, bought a Jeep. Where did she get the money from? Mary, Mary that I know. Something is fishy. I must find out find out what and you see when you are determined to find out things you will always find something is that true low self esteem number two is the mindset that leads to what I call an uncultured use of words uncultured use of words Psalms 141 verse 3, an uncultured use of words. God is helping us tonight. An uncultured use of words. Psalm 141 verse what? Psalm 141 verse 3. Everyone read. One to read. It said, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Look at me. There are many of us right now where you are seated. The devil of your destiny. That which has chained you and made nonsense out of your life. Is this gate called your lips. Hallelujah. The gate of uncultured words. Many of us have killed the dreams of people because we spoke something to them. Many of us have destroyed the destinies of people because we spoke words. Many of us have torn friends apart because of an uncultured word. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know that these decoration people, there's a way they behave? Uncultured words. Many of us have had witchcraft attack because our mouth introduced us to things we should keep. 
How do you know? See that lady, that fine one, the other one, that very fine one. That's my wife. In fact, I'm even planning. I think I should get to Germany, hopefully. There's one morning I'm waiting, and while you are talking, the elder is nodding. Say, where did you even say you are going again? Say, Germany. Everything has been working. All of a sudden, everything scatters. Our mouth. There are many of us, you plan to buy a car in 10 years. You have, I'm not saying confession of faith. Telling people, look, in fact, right now, the last time we went to Kotonou, and it's a lie. Pressure to say things that should not be. Set a watch. Put a gate, oh God, in my mouth that I will know when to speak. Nobody mocked you because they did not know you were barren. You carried your mouth, running it around, telling people and saying, don't tell anybody. For what? Say, don't, I don't know you, or don't tell anybody. It's me that said, Benga's wife, this and that and that happened. How we have put ourselves in trouble because we cannot shut our mouths. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was you that revealed to an armed robber that 10 million came into your father's account. They came, broke his head, broke your house, broke everything, broke the safe, removed the money. And he said, Kai, this world is a wicked world. Set a guard over my mouth. Let me tell you, you must learn to know when to speak and when to keep quiet. Many of you have made fools out of yourself because your father came and met you and said, I'm leaving your mother. And instead of you to be matured, you say, leave her, Jared. She's a wicked woman. Only for you to hear her own side. And she said, there's something I've not told you. Your father's been cheating on me from the day you were born. I've been enduring. And then you stand stupefied because you have backed your father and ran your mouth against your mother. Are you getting what I'm saying? The height of mental maturity in terms of communication is when you know when to speak and when to keep quiet. When to speak and when to keep quiet. Some of you people come to you for counseling and say, I've been fornicating or I've been suffering from masturbation. I've been doing immediately. You feel you say, ah, God is changing life. So say, what happens? Say, Man, the rate at which masturbation is disturbing people. I can't, ah, ah some brothers that you don't even expect you see that keep a watch oh god over my mouth keep a watch a guy came and met you and said look oh um i'm i'm, I'm we're going to get married let me just calm down i'm trusting god for some finances to come before you knew it you have sent text to 11 ladies you chief bridesmaid you this and then later the guy will say i'm not doing it. and the friend say how far our marriage hey, god is working and you are under pressure because you've run your mouth saying what you should not say the Bible says, a word spoken in due season. There is a due season for communication. Is God helping us? Mindsets. 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 Many of our parents go and run their mouths in the villages. Oh, I've been promoted. I'm a millionaire now. In fact, the last check entered and they said there's one village project. Please, we're allocating the task of 5 million naira to you. And you see that the children are crying and suffering. And the man is building a community somewhere. Because your mouth, your mouth destroyed you. One time one lady came and met me. She thought it was good news. Very respectable um, man of God that she was going out with. And I think one time, I don't know. Let me assume the guy was carried away. And he wanted to make advances on her. And do a lot of things. And you know, she advised him. And at the end, he felt bad. He said, look. I don't know what came over me. Let's pray this and that. And then she came to talk to me. And she, she thought it was going to be a good news. She says, honestly, I need to tell you something. It's not every man of God that is a man of God. Though. I knew where she was going to. I listened to her. Uh, there are some things you don't come to me for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then she came and met me. That ah, this and that and that. This person did this. Can I imagine? That this person did this. She was so disappointed. She's still been disappointed. She still did this. And I said, shame on you. One. Because you were, was it not in a room? Was it outside? It happened. You went to the room. You were also tempted. You will not accept that part of your role. The role you played in seducing him. You, are you saying you did not see the advancement coming? You were enjoying the attention until it got to the limit where you think you can take it. Is that not how it happens? 
it was holding you doing all kinds of things you were enjoying it when you felt it will now cross the boundary what you call boundary you now started talking and you are coming to report him rather than praying and humble yourself i'm not justifying immorality i'm talking about the foolishness of unguarded uncultured communication and the way she was talking to me i know she has told more than hundreds of people right there and you 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 destroy now listen we are very disciplined people by the grace of God in this ministry. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it, many people have run down the churches and the ministry of others because of certain things. Especially this immorality thing. People come for counseling and they talk. They say all kinds of things. They say you are the... I, I remember one lady who met me and said, um, you are the only man of God in a long time who has talked to me without sleeping with me. I said, it's a sign that you need deliverance. While you are concentrating and saying people are doing this, there is a wicked spirit at work in you that is destroying people. Rather than thinking you are so seductive, you better find out that the hand of God needs to come upon your life to change it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Unguarded communications. Unguarded communications. Matters that don't concern you. It's amazing. You hear people talking about their father, talking about their mother, talking about their sister. A lady met me and said, ah, that uh, her sister just got married though. Sharp, sharp, she's now pregnant. I said, shut your mouth. You, are, you, you can imagine the stupidity of your communication. Look at what drives your mind. Look, I'm teaching you this because it will save you trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you are hated by people right now because you have joined the heads of too many people, including your destiny helpers. Every time they mention your name to live to people say, may God forbid. I rather die than to give this person a job. This person is a destroyer of destiny. Have you seen people like that? You come in between two people who are in a relationship and you say, my brother, I'm a Christian. No, uh, I won't hide this thing from you. There's something I want to tell you about this lady. I saw the way you are blind flower and blind f buying flower and all of these things. All these things you are doing. What is this lady has been rocking her life since she was 13. You are just coming innocently. You don't know. You, you think she's a nice lady. And the guy said, eh. Well, I'm not saying she has HIV, but who knows? If there's something, go for a test. Mount. Some of us, listen. Mindset, listen to me. It's not just to say we want to be successful. Are you getting what I'm saying? I remember when Benny Hinn had his scandal, for instance. Many people in the body of Christ did not stay to find out what happened. Everybody started moving, running down Benny Hinn. The following Sunday, many pastors were preaching. When they said they caught him with Paula White, right now that Creflo Dollar, you see it on, on news, that Creflo Dollar asked his congregation to buy him 65 million naira jet. That's not true. That's not what happened. Are you seeing that now? Everybody, those who have been angry, there are people angry today that Kenneth Copeland is flying his jet. There are people angry at all kinds of, of, of things. And we run our mouth. We say all kinds of things. People have called their mothers witches. Call their fathers witches. Listen, give yourself a warning and discipline your mouth and say, Lord, keep my mouth shut when it needs to be shut and to speak when it needs to speak. Hallelujah. Unguarded communications. They tell a man of God, lead offering. And he comes and says, uh, as I was leading the offering, the Lord said this, stand up to mean that he wants to show that he's a man of God. And you spend one hour just for offering on guarded use of your mouth. You just disgrace yourself and threw yourself in ashes. Are we growing tonight? Some of these issues look little, but this is what makes leaders out of people. Notice that leaders are calm people. They are people who evaluate things. They are people who look into things. Because one day, somebody is going to say something about your life, your ministry, your business, something. Is that true? I remember when one woman, I think somebody met me and said one woman was saying this koinonia, we emphasize the Holy Spirit, not Jesus. He said, that's witchcraft, that's signs of the end time. And the person was hoping that I would respond to it and I just kept quiet. I said, glory be to Jesus. And that was the end of it. Because sometimes, 
I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus that may you not run your mouth in the presence of your enemy and give him the key to destroy your life. From the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks and then it ruins your life and then you close doors of destiny over your life. Many things have been shot in our lives because of these mindsets. There are many others, but I decided to pick two to talk about. Still, the mental transformation. That God will raise people in this place who are leaders indeed. Somebody comes to gossip to you, and immediately he finishes the gossiping about Tosin. You tell the person, let's hold hands and pray for her. And the person is tongue and embarrassed and doesn't know what to do. Tomorrow they mark you as a real Christian. Do you know why many preachers' messages are not strong on the pulpit? They know you outside of pulpit. They know your life of gossiping and backbiting. They know your insincerity in handling the things of the kingdom. And so when you say God will bless you, the words are little. They don't carry weight. May God give you the gift of a friend that has discipline with words. May God give you the gift of a friend that will use his words to bless you. You may not understand the implication of what I'm teaching you. Well, I don't want us to just say, Lord, send the rain. I'm teaching you practical issues that will make you exceptional. People will look at your life and your ideologies will be compelling. And people will come and say, why? What is, what is the framework of your mind? And you will let them know that the Lord Jesus Christ has transformed your life. You will see jobs you did not apply for come to you only because you, of your calmness. Everything is not just about your certificate. You will find out when you finish that it takes more than certificate to reign. It's God speaking to us. Preachers, God cannot trust you with innocent people because you cannot hear their cases and keep quiet. God cannot trust you with, with all kinds of people. There are pastors, God cannot trust them with large members because the day you know that one member is a billionaire, that day, everybody in the church will know that this guy is a billionaire and they will strangle him everybody will come and say we are soliciting for financial support and run him down because he gave you tithe of his billion there are people in this place seated who are dangerously prosperous don't think everybody is struggling there are people seated quietly here i know them There are people here who are dangerously anointed. Grace of God. There are people here whose parents, if you know the status, the societal status of their parents, you won't even go and knock their office. Yet they are calm and quiet. The day I found out that one of our ladies here was the daughter of one prominent man, I was shocked. I was shocked at the humility and simplicity of that lady. The day I found out that this big man, this is the daughter, I said, my goodness, what humility. There are some of us. Your, your father was given caretaker or something of a local government and, and you wouldn't let anybody rest. I know that I'm hard on us tonight, but it's because I love you. I want to make leaders out of us. Not just men who are tongue talkers, but people who have the wisdom for living. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never sit down and entertain gossip. Be the one to drive that atmosphere away so that God will come and bless you. Never be the one. Let it not be your room that when they want to run down people, your room is the place where they meet. Say, let's meet at, at uh, that usual joint. And when you come, say, hey, before they reach, say, sit down first. Let me be serving you minerals as you do it. No. Let your room be the place where when you talk of destiny, when someone's life is down, he says, I know that I will go to Sam's house because if I can find my way there, I will find God. I will find hope. My neighbor has one friend that I told her in my, she may be here listening to me. In my opinion, that is one of the nicest women I have met in my life and the most sincere woman that my neighbor's friend 
I've seen my neighbor two times when you know our regular human activities challenges. She shared her testimony here. And that woman will come to her and kneel down and pray and cry. She will come and see my neighbor washing and come immediately and collect the clothes and wash for her. I, there was a time she came, there was nobody. You know, sometimes I lock my door and you wouldn't know I'm around. She came in and there was nobody. Do you know what she did? She laid her hands on my neighbor's door and started weeping and said, Lord, will you open the door for my friend and bless my friend? She didn't know I was listening. I, I said, oh God, will you give our people in Koinonia wives like this? How many of you can be that true that you use your words well only to bless? Will you make up your mind that beginning from today, I will set a guard over my mouth. My mouth will not be the reason why I would destroy the life of another. Anything that proceeds from my mouth will only be that which carries blessings. In Israel, if you curse somebody, they will kill you because they understand the implication of words. Is God speaking to us tonight? Many of us have made ourselves cheap. When you started out, people respected you because you were a man of few words. Right now, you have become a talkative and gradually you see that your respect has been going down. Have you seen people like that? One moment they are rest. In fact, when they come, they say, sir, good afternoon. At the end of the conversation, the woman says, okay, my son, I've heard about you. Whereas where you came, she said, come, man of God, I, I covet the grace upon your life, but you threw away your honor. Everybody... Write this word down, honor. Honor. These are the principles that bring honor to your life. Value honor more than money. Value honor more than reputation. Money cannot give you honor, but honor will give you blessings. Honor. The ability to recognize and reward your difference is what we call honor. Uncommon principles that will make you exceptional. Tonight's teaching may look simple, but it is indeed powerful. As a man think it, your mindset. I'm doing a re-engineering in our mind. A recalibration. Changing our perceptions from our various cultural standpoints and connecting us to the attitude of the kingdom. That which make kings. That which make nobles. That which makes men wise. That which opens cheap doors for greatness. Two more things and we are going to pray. How do I engage? I've said it but then I will say it again and again. How do I engage in renewing my mind? When I find out that there is something flawed in my life. How do I start? Now I found out that I have a poisonous communication. Now I found out that I'm a bitter and envious person. I found out that I'm a jealous person. Negative dimension of jealousy. I found out that I'm suffering a lot of complex. I found out that I'm suffering failure and defeat. How do I begin to rise? Number one, you must admit and accept that you desire that then there is a need for transformation in that area of your life transformation will never come till you are humble enough to accept there are some of us here god has been blessing us with all kinds of financial blessings but something about our mindset keep throwing money out of our lives Favor brings money to your life. Wisdom throws it out of your life. There are many of us who ministerial doors open up to us, but the people never call us back because there is something about our mindset. You go to preach in a church. You don't study the way the church setting is. You just stand and run your mouth and say anything, anyhow to anybody. You go to a church that is predominantly elders. Your packaging and communication must suit the context of your audience. You go to a church that is filled with intellectuals. I've preached in all kinds of churches. And they like me. I've preached in all kinds of places. Because I paid the price to understand the people I'm communicating to. It's God speaking to us. So God opened the door of ministry. You now went to preach. You were preaching in, in, a, in a military cantonment. And you were speaking as if you were talking to market women. 
because you did not know how to communicate her right. And they said, please, don't bring this man again. This man came to embarrass us. Our ogre was here. We thought God would glorify himself. God glorified himself, but this man, Kai, don't bring him again. And the door closes. And you see a man, six months, they've not called you to bless anybody. Not because you are not anointed. You have the anointing, but this mental adjustments. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us, somebody comes to your life and the mindset of courtesy and greeting the person, you just come and say, I am apostle, so, 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 and so. This and that and that. There was a young man that was standing well, while I returned from the trip, I was, I just ran to quickly refresh and come and the young man just stood there. And I was asking the protocol, why is this guy here? He said he came for prayer. I said, by this time, this is Koinoni, I can't see you now. He said, I've been coming and every time I come, I find out that your door is locked. So I decided to come now and stay. You see that? On a very good day, I would have said, so it's like nobody has introduced me to you, Abi. Protocol, can you let him know the kind of... No, 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 no. Yes, he did what was wrong, but at least solve the problem at that point since he's there and bless him and then show him the right way to do it. That guy now will live loving me more, but he can live hating me and say, this person, he's going right there to go and preach, but this is a soul dying. So is your genuine test for souls true? Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Little foxes, brothers and sisters, spoil the vine little adjustments that we need to make to our lives to make us exceptional many of us are anointed no doubt but many of us cannot reign because the wisdom that makes for dominion the wisdom that makes men exceptional the wisdom that makes people extraordinary is deficient in our lives that mental adjustment one more time lay your hands on your head and say lord jesus I make up my mind to make the required adjustments for my greatness. I make up my mind to contend for change and contend for adjustment. I make up my mind to lay aside the old and to pick up the new. Hallelujah. I told you two more things. Write it down very quickly. Number one, Two more things I'm adding to what I've said that will make you exceptional. The attitude of courtesy. Courtesy. You know what we call courtesy? Decorum. Respect for people. That attitude that gives honor and courtesy and respect. Another word you can put is respect. The mindset where you hold people in high esteem is an adjustment that will make the rain fall in your life. It will make you a magnet. By and large, after preaching, there are things you do that makes you lovable. It makes you inviting. Look at me. Come, Sam. If Sam comes and finishes preaching, watch this. And then I come up as a man of God and I just collect the mic from him. And I say, Sam, that's nice. My boys are really growing. You see that? Watch this. Am I anointed? Yes. Do I love God? Do I love souls? Do you think my relationship with Sam will be sustainable? No. Because I simply violated his self-worth to prove a point. There's no attitude of respect and courtesy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you are higher or lower than that person, that attitude of honor and courtesy. And I pick up the mic, Sam, God bless you. Everybody, let's celebrate the hand of God upon Sam. Sam, thank you. You are a great blessing. I honor you. Thank you so much. You see that? Courtesy. At once, Sam will love me and Sam will reward me by increasing my self-worth and my honor in his mind. See, this is what makes some leaders, although they are silent, the reverence that people give to them is almost like, like human worship. There is something they are doing. They have transferred honor to their subordinates and they are receiving the harvest of that honor back. Are you learning something? 
Never you sub your subordinates to prove that you are mighty. You are a fool if you do that. Transfer honor to them. Some of them will be rebellious, but it's a law that cannot be broken. The honor will return to you a hundredfold. Is God speaking to us? The mentality of courtesy. Ladies, one act of courtesy can open your marital destiny. You have fasted for 40 days, but your attitude, no courtesy. You give a gentleman something, you cannot even give him with, 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 with courtesy. Help me with that handkerchief. Eh, take, hello, what are you even saying again? Take. And whereas this guy has been looking from afar, oh Lord, do I go or do I not go? And immediately he sees that nonsense. He plots the graph and says, no, this is not what God showed me. And he turns back. Are you anointed? Yes. Do you pray in tongues? Yes. But it has stopped the door of marriage. Am I speaking to us? Some of us, our attitude of being rude, rude to people, courtesy. I make it as a point of duty. I make it as a point of duty as much as possible. Even when I am rebuking people, they know that in that rebuke, I love them. I sent a text to the leaders, I think it was yesterday or today, appreciating all of them for handling the ministry activities and doing everything in my absence. I'm still going to tell them again during the, our leaders meeting because I love them. I honor the leaders in this ministry. I respect the grace of God upon their life. And I, I thank God for the grace and the opportunity and the privilege of working with them. That is the reason why no matter what happens when you come outside, you must find some chairs. I rebuke the protocol most times when I come and see people standing. Why? Because of honor. I honor the fact that you left your house and came here. Are you seeing that you are not just coming to, to Koinonia because I'm anointed? There is an atmosphere that unconsciously honors you. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are churches you go and you are treated like a piece of rag. The only person who deserves to be honored is the man of God. And members say, I can't stay here. Is the man warded? Yes. Is he anointed? Yes. But he does not understand the organizational principles of sustaining success. Please learn it. Courtesy. Learn to be cautious. Learn to treat people with honor and respect. Greet people. Greet people. Who say this person, when I was in SS3, was please leave all those things. Greet people. Oh, Benga, how are you? Um, Abiodun, how are you? When I came in, I saw Jake's. I gave him a nice hug. And I just come and say, I'm, no, 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 no. Say, I receive grace to honor men. Say, I receive grace to show courtesy. If somebody offends you, handle the situation in wisdom. Don't just hit things in a way that you scatter the opportunities of tomorrow because you are trying to respond to the pain of today. There are roommates who cannot talk to themselves again because of that mutual respect of honor. And you, when people honor you, reciprocate it back. You become foolish when you are only receiving and not giving. If Tosin looks at me now and says, ah, says something that I like, I will find something to reciprocate. And so you become a friend of everybody. When people are suffering from complex, they run to you because you have an atmosphere that says you are welcome. You have an atmosphere. When I finish Koinonia here, I've been, I've been tired since morning. But I have to stand here to at least the people are joining a line that is already embarrassing for me because I know some of the people standing in that line it's not like there are some helpless people but they humble themselves and they stand and to be able to do that I give them a hug I talk to them with courtesy all our little children that come to hug me here I honor them that's why immediately after service they come around you the little children sit near you as they are sharing the grace they are running away from you something about your life is driving them that's how a business partner will look at you and say you don't have the skill for business but there is an attitude there's something about you I want to do business with you there is a business of hundreds of millions that I want to do with you and you step into favor 
favor that you will never recover from. There are doors of ministry that have been opened to me today that I know should never have been opened. But because I honored my way to them, I treated people with courtesy. And I didn't know when I met them again and they were the ones who advocated that I be blessed. Is God speaking to us? The last thing I want to talk about is the mentality of endurance. Endurance. Help us, Holy Spirit. Just give me five minutes and we'll pray. Everybody say endurance. Say it, endurance. The Bible puts it this way. He that endures to the end. Everybody say endure to the end. Many people will never taste of the fruit of true success because we gas out. We do not have the staying power. Listen, listen, listen. That's why the ministry of prayer is inevitable if you want to finish strong. Endurance. Endurance. In your journey to greatness, you will endure. You will endure hardship. You will endure misunderstanding. You will endure misinterpretation. You will endure a lot. You will make sacrifices. You will endure hunger. But he that endures, let me tell you, when you see a blessed man, respect him. Don't ever see any man, either in the corporate world or in the ministry that is truly lifted and trivialize what God has done. Never want my crown until you see the scars on my hand. Every crown has a scar on the hand. Are you, are, you, are you getting this? I'm rounding up. I'm speaking to you. That illusion that greatness will just happen to you is a dream. Wake up. That illusion that somebody will become successful and then you enter his success just like that. I'm telling you it's a dream. Wake up. So while you are there running people down, realize that if you must be great, your own curriculum of endurance is waiting for you. No matter how you are, there are people today who misunderstand koinonia. There are people today who misinterpret what we are doing. We have been persecuted in our respect. Don't you think it's everybody that loves Joshua Selman? There are people when you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the Lord Jesus. There are people if you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the devil and the antichrist. All together is what builds dexterity for ministry. I remember when the protocol started responding to calls and the rest. I received a lot of backlashes from people. Are you trying to say you are too busy now? You cannot respond to us. Why should protocol be endurance? But right now, it has proven to be an excellent system. Endurance. Are you willing to endure? Many of us do not want to be talked bad about. Sorry for you as far as success is concerned. Let me tell you, it's a cross that every great man must carry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You want anointing, but you don't want the persecution that comes with it. You are dreaming. Oh, they will talk against you. They will say, how are we sure that anointing is genuine? How are we sure the miracles are real? How are we sure? This one that have not been around now for two weeks. <laughs> Somebody can say, I knew it. Maybe he went to collect power. <laughs> he went to collect power for the next level. Listen, listen. Never be under pressure to prove your innocence. There is a law. You can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. Be comforted by the immutability of kingdom laws. And do not be under pressure to prove any point. If somebody meets somebody and says, Benga, I'm suspecting that he has been sleeping with prayer band ladies. Don't try me. Me. God knows. We, no, 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 no. You can do nothing against the truth. The truth was buried after three days. It resurrected. You can't hide truth for long. No, sir. No, sir. Keep your sacrifice and endure. I'm giving you a mindset. Realize 
that success does not come on a platter of gold. The favor of God does not take away the need for endurance. You will endure hardship. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will endure hardship. To be prosperous financially, you will make sacrifices. You will make mistakes. You will learn a lot. To grow in ministry, you will have to learn a lot of lessons through pain, sweat, and blood. I know my message is not attractive, but this is what will make you uncommon. Let's be sincere with ourselves. If you really want to see the outstretched arm of God, you have to cry and say, God, help me. And in case you are here arrogantly saying, I'm free, yet, yet, the Bible says, let him that thinks take heed. Immorality, smoking, drinking. It's sad that you have to say these things. But there are people, we have all kinds of explanations. The alcohol, the Bible said in the New Testament, the Greek word for wine is alcoholic. I don't care what justification you bring to be a drunkard. A drunkard is a period. The Bible says wine is a mocker. I take it once in a while. You will suffer once in a while. Because it's when your breakthrough is coming. That the temptation for liquor will come. Are we together? How about pornography? How about masturbation? Oh, I don't sleep around. It's a spirit. Why am I saying these things? These are the things that authorize the power of darkness. Please! Don't say, especially this masturbation thing and pornography. I'm not condemning you. But don't ever, if anybody has preached to you and has said it's all right, Joshua Selman is telling you it's a, it's, a, it's a cancer of the spirit. That's why you find out your prayer life dries. No matter what happens. But I'm still healing the sick. Continue. Are we together? I want and I'm trusting God that there will be maximum breakthrough. But we have to be serious. Mean business with God. Mean business with God. The Allah sends me money once in a while. Please delete his number tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The military officer, it's not every time. It's three times a year. Delete his number even before we start ministry. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that name the name of Christ depart. Psalm 66 verse 18. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. There is something that can make a man's prayer to not reach heaven. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart. So when we begin to pray tonight, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, in this miracle service, this addiction is over. I have to end it. Are we together? I burn all my MBs. I buy my phone and I spend all my MB watching nonsense. Naked photos, all kinds of things. Now it's a spirit. See, anything you cannot control is a spirit, including food. Don't think I'm just talking. I'm, I'm going to come. Everybody has a slice in this pie. There must be something that relates to you. I don't have a problem with women. Food. You can't fast. Because of food, many of us would rather remain in the same spiritual level forever. Let me tell you, gluttony is as bad as fornication. I hear what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. You can talk about true power that puts situations and circumstances in command. And your entire life, do you know there are people that eat whether or not they are hungry. Once they see it, the same way a man sees a woman and cannot resist her. You see food and you look, ah, whose own is this? You put one bones, you add another one. You are eating before, until it finishes, there's no rest. It's an urge, you need help.
You need help. Are we together? And all kinds of variations of addictions. Those who sleep with little children alone, put a naked adult woman, they will pass as if they didn't see her. Children. Men and men. Women and women. My name is Joshua Selman. Let me tell you, if you don't deal with these things, you will never go far. You will rise up as usual. But ask Samson. I will arise as before. And all of a sudden, his glory. God. Am I condemning you? No. Will I be quiet about it? No. Because you must receive something tonight. So that you will not be healed and delivered. And the demons even mock you. Before prayer, they just jump out and wait for you. That's what happens to a lot of people. Is it not in your Bible? I'm going to share with you on that. When a spirit leaves a man, what does it do? It leaves him forever. The Bible says Satan departed from Jesus for a season. Came back again when there was another pressure. And Jesus started negotiating. Mass, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup. Can we negotiate another way? But he overcame. He said, nevertheless, not my will. Hallelujah. Please, I want us to be sincere with ourselves tonight as we cry before God. I know what I've said is very uncomfortable to many of us, but this is the key. When you pray, you clear out that way. Satan does not like what I'm preaching. It takes a lot of courage to preach what I'm telling you. But that's the key. Are we together? But I think I'm okay. No, opportunity has not yet been created. So instead of sitting down to say, I hope my roommate is hearing. Uh -uh. There's no roommate. There's no, I hope my husband is hearing. God, I, God, apostle, God bless you. This stupid man, thank God he came for koinonia. I'm talking to you. There is no pointing fingers. You see, that spirit that exempts you from the word of God. Uh, that sense of self-righteousness that makes you feel, I am okay. Talk to a Jimmy or talk to Kenny or promise is the same spirit that destroys people. I'd like you to lift up your voice in one minute. Koinonia, cry before the God of heaven and say, Lord, it must be broken. Addictions must be broken. I don't care what you read in the internet about them. That alcoholism must be broken. I can't keep destroying my body. Pornography. Masturbation. I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour. I need thee. Come bless me now my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and righteousness pray shake it take a baba baba i've come to call that spirit a liar on christ the solid rock i stand all of the ground is sinking sand all of the ground is sinking sand hallelujah listen Look at me. Some of you can do anything for money. If you must sleep with an animal for money, you would do it. For as long as there is money tied to it, you throw away your Christianity. If it's money, no problem. As long as you will give me money. Someone sent me a text. Uh, was it yesterday or day before yesterday? I was in the middle of a very serious intent.
intense prayer time and then his text came and he said they wanted to give him a job but they said he should give like advance like pay some money so that they can process it and i told him i said don't you do that you cannot mix you can't if you are paid for it where then is the place of god Please don't say I'm not a Nigerian. I'm not a stupid person. I know what I'm saying. Whatever God cannot do in my life, oh, let nobody do it. He said, lest you will say I made Abraham rich. Who told you God is not able? You see, all these carnal things we keep doing, we edge God out. When it comes to real issues, we act as if God is not alive. Oh, if God cannot do it, let it not be done. No. I want you to pray. And say, Lord, whatever I do not have discipline for, break it out of my life. Pray. Pray. Shabakataya. The secret for fire in a ministry. The secret for fire in a family. Is the secret for fire in a life. It's a painful reality. But it's a key that will take you high. Habarata kaparoto zobrendi galapora susi abahata. Kapada kataya. Grace. Break every habit. Pray. I break any challenge. I call you by your name. Pray. Masturbation, you are a spirit. Pornography, you are a spirit. Gluttony, you are a spirit. Smoking, drinking. Grace tonight. Grace from the throne. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point on that. Listen. For many people I have found out that we are not interested in paying the price to create the atmosphere. Everybody say atmosphere. Are we together? You are a brother, anybody, any sister can hop into your house any day, any time, anyhow. Are we together? Lie down on your bed loosely and carelessly. You don't care. 2 a.m. in the night, still in your house. What are you doing? We're in a relationship. Nonsense. You are not the first to get married. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You must create discipline. If you are friends with a roommate and the roommate is bringing boys all the time to your room, negotiate. And brother can say, if that agreement, if you cannot reach a consensus like that, find a way of getting out of that place. Someone cannot be sleeping with a lady you are there watching. You will only watch for one month. I assure you. Atmospheres. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. There are things that can be discussed on phone. Discuss it on phone. When we were staying together, Ejimi will tell you, when we were staying together, as years ago, there was an unwritten rule. Let me tell you, these are some of the rules that helped us. God is my witness. My younger sister is here. My younger sister has never slept in my house till today. My blood younger sister. Only two people have stayed in my house. One, a Jimmy, and one, my younger brother, the, the day he came. Am I stupid? No. Am I a fool? No. It's called atmosphere. It's the price for atmosphere. Someone comes to your room with visitors and says, please, there's a little birthday party. It looks like you are busy today. Can you give us the room? 
You thought they just celebrated birthday and drank beer and smoked and left. They left spirits. They left influences. Yes, I know what I'm saying. You get into that room, I assure you, it will take the grace of God for you to connect again. How about all kinds of petty movies? A lot of us believers have all kinds of compartments on our phone. There is compartment A, gospel. Gospel means anything that reminds you of heaven. And then there is the B part. When you want to socialize. Look, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Choose ye when? Otherwise, I don't care whether they dip you in one gallon of oil. I assure you, you will fall down, you will stand up. Satan will be waiting for you there. You will have dreams that will press nonsense out of you. Shout Jesus, shout Abraham, shout any name you know. Nothing will happen. That's what makes us powerless. He told Gideon, said, why have we not seen the miracles of our fathers? He said, take away the idols. My room cannot be a place for somebody to keep beer. Don't take it, but let me use your fridge to make it cold. What are you doing? It's exactly the same thing. Please pray in one minute and say, Lord, the price and the unashamedness to create an atmosphere. An atmosphere. Lift your voice. Pray. The price. My, my room, my house, my office cannot be a place for rubbish. When they want to bribe, it's not in my office. The meeting will not be held in my office. When they want to fake a miracle, it will not be on my pulpit. Pray, pastors. Don't let any dumb dick and Harry just arise and hold the mic on your pulpit and do all kinds of jamborees. I paid the price to create the atmosphere to host the presence of God. Pray, Koinonia. It's part of the meeting. This is already someone's deliverance. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, only, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Do this and you will see the power of God in your life in a way that you'll be surprised. Imagine that you are sleeping and all that is playing is a powerful prophecy. Let me tell you what will happen. You will continue listening to it in your dreams. I guarantee you. And that one is powerful because your body that limits the spirit is sleeping. Ah, you will access anointings. You will wake up under a strong presence. I know what I'm saying. Number two, let's hurry up. The second challenge or the second key, I think the rain is settled, so as many, if it's not an interruption, please um, arrange them outside. If they can still squeeze in, that's all right. Number two, let's hurry up, please. The reality of demon spirits and the character of their operation, write it down, is something you cannot ignore and prevail in this life. The reality, demon spirits, alongside the character of their operation, 
the Bible again and again cautions us and says that we should not be ignorant of his devices. Satan has a way he operates. There is a way, there is a system that Satan operates. Anybody who ignores the reality of demon spirits alongside an, an insight into the character of their operations will pay the price severely. Let's look at two scriptures very quickly. Luke chapter 4, please, verse 14 and 18. Media help us. Luke 4, 14 and 18. The Bible says Jesus took the scroll, right? He, the messianic prophecy. And um, go to verse 15, please. Next verse. 15. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all 16. You are reading down to 18. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Right? What did he read? Then it was given to him. It was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. The Messianic prophecy. 18. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to preach what? Deliverance to the captives. There are people under captivity. The reality of demon spirits in our world and the fact that they influence people, Christians and unbelievers alike, should not be ignored. Are demons real? The Bible says so. Is Satan real? The Bible says so. Do they oppress people? Yes. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you power, authority. The word there is exousia. Behold, I give you power. Luke 10 19. To tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. So there is the enemy and the enemy has a measure of power. Are we together? And he says, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Look at me, please. Look at me. Koinonia, look at me. Every time Jesus commissioned people, the first thing he told them to do was to cast out demons. Not heal the sick. Cast out demons. Right? When you read... Um, Let's look at a scripture, Mark, Mark 6, we'll read verse 7, then we'll run to 13 quickly. Mark 6, 7, 13. And he called unto him the 12, read on please, it's projected, and did what? And began to send them forth two by two. He gave them power to do what? On clean spirits, on holy spirits. Spirits that are out of the influence of the Holy Spirit. They are called unclean spirits. They are everywhere like the air we breathe. They are responsible for the anger problem in people. Are we together? They are responsible for the barrenness in people. They are responsible for delay and retrogression. They are the ones who appear to you in dreams and sleep with you. They are the ones who appear and cause miscarriages. They are called unclean spirits. Now, regardless of the theological stratification, they are still spirits. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But against what? Principalities, uh -huh. powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. They are all called unclean spirits. And there are three ways that their, their ministry or their life found expression in the earth. Number one is covenants. It's the most powerful way demon spirits advance their cause. Covenants. Number two is ignorance. Ignorance of the precepts and the principles of God. The light shines in darkness. So when there is no light, darkness remains. Are we together? And then number three, disobedience. 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 Demon spirits are real. 
A Christian cannot be possessed, but he sure can be influenced. Absolutely. Galatians 5, when you read from verse 16, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit and the Bible. He was talking to the Galatian church, people who had already encountered Christ. Are we together? But this is what he says. This I say then that you walk in the spirit so that you will not gratify what? The desires of the flesh. Then he says the flesh lusted after the spirit. The spirit after the flesh. Two of them are consistently contending. What does that tell you? That you're a Christian does not mean that these demon spirits will not attempt to influence, manipulate, or wage control over your life. There's nothing embarrassing when a Christian is delivered. The operation looks like possession, but it's not possession. And now this is the balance. I'm going to create a balance. Because there are all kinds of prophetic ministries because they do not have a sound word base. Right? And let me tell you something. Even the prophetic and the supernatural is limited by the recipient's understanding of the operation of the word. Are we together? I can be a genuine prophet of God, but because I do not have a sound understanding of scripture, I can look at this beautiful lady looking at me and see a spirit behind her. And based on my interpretation of that vision, I call her a witch. Are we together? And then I fabricate a strategy. And I say, Oga, the solution to dealing with this, your wife, seeing that she's a witch, is to leave her. So that is my, that is my advice based on my limitation. It may not be that I saw a wrong vision. But because my vision was not dealt with on the strength of the word of God for correct interpretation. It's not enough to see. Understandest what thou readest. He was looking. He was not understanding. Demons are real. They are here in this place tonight. Are we together? They came with many people. They came with many families. Many well-meaning people carry them. Our job is to separate you from them. That's what deliverance is. It's a separation. Let me tell you something. In the most authentic definition, deliverance is salvation. Right? The most authentic, in its purest form, deliverance is salvation. It's a complete translation. So every other thing you do is in support of that understanding. Demons are real. Let me tell you, you will be surprised to find out how many things have not been working in your life and can be credited to the ministry of these wicked spirits in our lives. There were many things in my life that didn't used to work for a long time. I tried, I did all I knew to do. But when I realized that, you see, let me tell you something. Because demon spirits have an advantage, hear me? Because demon spirits have an advantage of the realm of the spirit. When you try to fight in the flesh, you will be defeated forever. Every time, at all times, regardless of what you try to do. Someone promises to help you. You go to bed, a stranger appears again. The person gets up in the morning and tells you, I can't remember telling you what I said. Please get out of my office. Something made them do so. The same way there is an anointing that can call a destiny helper into your life. And you say, sorry, I don't need any help again. You say, God told me to do it. I don't like you, but I have to do it. Because something, may that thing, whatever thing it is, it must come upon you today. Yeah. Where men arise to make your life easy. Hallelujah. Demon spirits are real. Don't be embarrassed when you find out that these spirits are leaving you. Rejoice. And listen, please, don't just fall down and stand up and check yourself and feel embarrassed and then go back. No. And by the way, it has nothing, deliverance has nothing to do with falling down and manifesting. It has everything to do with the word of God prevailing over your person and casting out every nonsense that is roaming around your life. So you may be standing quietly. And they are flying out of you. Flying out of your destiny. The, when that, I'm teaching you this so that you will know what to expect and know how to appropriate it. So that when you leave this place, you now expect that that door that refused to open. Now that you know a spirit caused it, you expect it to open. So you start saying in the name of Jesus, I expect favor. 
I expect favor. A woman who has not been able to give birth, has not been able to take in. Husband is well, wife is well, both of you go to the hospital, they say there's nothing wrong as far as they know. All right, take in, madam. She cannot take in. Plants don't need consultation to take in. Animals don't need consultation. As haphazard as they are, the law still works. Because demons are not interested in the animals. They are interested in human beings. They are interested in your destiny. That's why they will refuse that you will not get that child. But the devil is a liar tonight. What of all those, all those lumps and all those nonsense that grow around your body? Lumps in your breast, lump in your stomach, lump every part. Movements around your body. What do you think is called? The Holy Spirit does not move in people in a foolish way. The Holy Spirit is, is, is he's an intelligent spirit. He does not oppress people. Do you know there are people here who cannot sleep? Young people, you, you, you watch them and they are still awake. Because the moment they close their eyes is a nightmare. Demons are real. The last key, number three. That the Lord will have us tonight to know. All of us must possess this if we really need results. It's your faith. Hmm. Your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith. Your faith. My faith reaches out to you. And I believe. Your word. Listen, let me tell you something about faith. Most of us, our understanding about faith is just for reception. But faith is also an instrument of defense. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Therefore, holding forth the shield. Because there are times between prophecy and manifestation you will need to stand. Faith becomes the weapon you use to shield yourself. That when another word comes and says, Kai, can you imagine Pastor Alpha, is this thing really working? And then the shield of faith, you lift it. And you say, no way. I know that my Redeemer liveth. is working. If it's working, show me the evidence. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He says, above all, taking the shield of what? Faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench, quench, quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Listen, faith is the result of an understanding. Faith is the result of an understanding. It produces persuasion. It's from the Greek word pistis. Conviction based on an understanding. He says, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Just like I'm persuaded that someone's testimony will turn around. I mean, somebody's life will turn around tonight. I am persuaded. Listen, it's not just what you do that produces result, but the faith that backs what you do. The conviction that backs what you do. Faith is powerful. The Bible says, by it, the elders obtained a good report. So if you need a good report, you will need that faith to obtain it tonight. And there are many of us who are trusting God for good reports. You want to change the doctor's report. You want to change every kind of nonsense report that the devil has brought. It will take faith. It will take faith. Conviction. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it everyone. Say in the name of Jesus. I believe in the power of God. I believe that nothing is impossible for God. And tonight, God, through His Spirit, will birth my testimony. I believe that with all my heart. I came in, there were people in Abuja, my Bible, at the back of my Bible is full of all kinds of people's prayer requests. You cannot imagine people dropping their prayer requests. Apostle, please as you are going back, can we drop our prayer requests all the way? Because there is a God that answers prayers. 
please hear me koinonia tonight like we prayed earlier on i want you to get angry with the situation in your life you see i cannot make you tired of it i can only encourage you he said woe to them who are at ease in zion the day you are tired you will change let today be that day rise up on your feet everyone. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Lord, my time has come. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, this health thing, I can't remain sick forever. No. This SS genotype, this HIV, this cancer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer point and then we'll begin to minister. I'd like you to say, Lord, grace to not doubt you tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point in our lives. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, whatever must come upon my life for me to move forward. Hold on. Let it come. And whatever must leave me, I have no loyalty to you. I don't care where you came from. Tonight I part ways with you forever. Lift your voice and pray. anointing that must land upon my life today. Every grace, every spirit, every dimension tonight you must come upon my life and everything that must leave me. I'm tired of any luggage upon my destiny. Koinonia, are you praying? Those online, make sure you are praying. Right where you are, at your home, so wherever you are streaming from. Hallelujah. 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 One of the graces I'm trusting God to come upon our life is grace for accelerated advancement. Listen, listen. There are many of us, our pace of movement is slow. You can't look at your life and say, A, B, C has happened within this time. It's not a good testimony. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I must move. Oh, I must move. There must be advancement. The overflows. Make sure you are praying. God is sharing you where you are. Yeah, 
Yes, oh God. I'm parting ways forever. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Listen. You must contend with prophecy. Oh, this bad luck upon my life must leave. I was not cursed like that. Even if it's a curse, it must go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a war to them who are at ease in Zion. There is enough function tonight to deliver the result you desire, except you are not interested. If you truly are interested and you are angry enough, tonight is not the time to spectate and pinch and gist. Anybody does that kind of thing for you tonight, know that the spirit is using that person. You can't come here and waste your time. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you. I'm about to speak. Please, I want you to pray. Mention every negative thing that you know has happened, patterns in your life that you know must change and say, God, arise for me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it must go over my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 Before God deals with our lives, we are going to be praying first and foremost that God will deal with our families. See, let me tell you something. It's not your fault that you came from that family. But it's your fault if you allow what came from there to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying, oh Koinonia. Believe what I'm saying. I love you too much to not lie to you. There are, there are ties and strongholds that are stopping people from rising. Lift your hands, everybody. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every strong shall be broken. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Now listen. Don't get too used to the fact that it's just about speaking and then people fall under the anointing and come be serious while prayers are going. Because it is at the word of God they respond. They are listening to me. I'm speaking. But until the command is given, there is nothing to confirm. I want to pray. Many of you will be very surprised. Open up your spirit. It's time for God to visit you and visit your families. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. My God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seen in the realm of the spirit pointed arrows. Listen. Pointed arrows. Pointed arrows. And on those arrows I see like papers placed on the arrows containing the names of people, names of families, names of territories. That's what the Lord is showing me right now. And we're going to pray. Listen. The power of God is going to come very strongly upon people. It's, it's not just you but your family. Are we together? And once that happens, know that the time has come. You pray it and declare that deliverance. Lift your hands. I want to pray now. Father, you brought us here 
to change lives change testimonies hallelujah hallelujah God is giving me a very crazy instruction just lift your left hand be stupid I've started my stupidity just follow me quietly just lift your left hand up to God and let me do the speaking you don't have to say anything please all those who I'm going to speak to now that the power of God comes on them let's begin to have them outside Jesus Father in the name of Jesus I pray right now my God I'm seeing so many people I don't even know what I'm doing I'm just responding to the spirit Lord you ask us to lift our left hands up whatever that means there are people I see fire right now it's going to begin to come on people Lord the moment that comes on their family let there be massive deliverances at the count of four that will happen now one two shaka patakata three four bring them out bring them out bring them out right now inside outside i'm seeing the spirit of god there's fire moving to families please let's save time at the word of the lord i place the word of the lord upon that situation of witchcraft inside outside is over is over is over is over I come with a word of prophecy. I prophesy as I've been commanded. Miracles, deliverances for families. Enough is enough, oh God. Bring them. There are so many people outside. So many people outside. All the overflows. I see miracles. It's like fire. Is like fire. Hallelujah. Keep your hands down. I am seeing fire. And it's going to come upon the heads of people. And the Lord is saying it is still the deliverance. Lord where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Right now all over the congregation. I prophesy it like fire. I see like an eruption. A volcanic eruption coming on the heads of people. The heads of people. Shake it, take it out. Where you are, the fire will meet you there. Where you are, where you are. The enemy has done this. We command every havoc. We command every havoc. I tell you, I see deliverance for many families. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit. Causing the tragedies. In my family. Be exposed now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The light shines in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. Be exposed. The spirits eating up finances eating up joy eating up peace kapatatata ekerato sotobashiata hallelujah hallelujah Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see written on this pulpit altars. And I want to pray. An altar 
is a platform erected by men that grants access to spiritual operations. Altars, 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 altars. At the count of seven, I tell you many people, this is not just families now. One, two, three, four, get ready. Five, six, seven, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Altars, catch fire. Altars, catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Shake it, take it, poro sotoba. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to call situations. The moment I call them, all those who are victims of it, the power of God will come upon them. Please, we are going to be fast. Right now, I pray the spirit of failure upon people. I'm seeing it. Lord, wherever they are, right now, at the count of three, let there be an exposition. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Failure. 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 Causing failure in lives. Failure in destinies. Failure in ministries. Failure in business. Failure in academics. Every form of failure, fire is coming on it right now. Fire is coming on it right now. Inside, outside. No, you can't stand it. It's your deliverance. It's your word. It's your prophecy. It's your word. That's why you came. Failure. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm seeing chains, and the Lord is saying, Let delay leave my people. That's what I'm hearing. Lord, where are those whose lives have been under one spot, inside and outside? At the count of three, I like you to shout, Jesus, delay is leaving now. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Delay, delay, delay of all kinds, of all kinds. Parato Soto Delay. Delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. Be broken now. Now. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Let her go. I break that chain now. 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 That chain of delay. That chain of delay is broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God is breaking delay. Listen. Hallelujah. I've prayed this prayer in this place before and the Lord is asking me to pray it again. That the destinies of men can be exchanged. So that you are walking. But you are not living your destiny. It's like you are living another person's life. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Please take this prayer seriously. It will do wonders in your life. Lift your hands. Inside and outside. And you watch what will happen now. Lord I pray. My God. 
I'm telling you, all I'm seeing in this place is fire. Any man here, any woman whose destiny has been exchanged so that the life you are living is not your blueprint right now. Let the exchange, let there be another exchange, another exchange, another exchange. The power of God is coming on people right now, right now, right now. Release their destiny. Release that mother's destiny now. Release that mother's destiny now. My goodness. It's your destiny. It's your destiny. You can't leave another person's script. Every witchcraft. Every manipulation. I curse it now. I curse it now. I curse it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray for people with strange movements in their body. I tell you, I feel fire. It's like people are literally bathing in fire. Strange movements. I want to pray. There are many ladies, many mothers under this category. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Every stranger, there is a lady, you feel a physical snake, physical snake moving on your body. But right now in Jesus' name, at the count of three, fire from the throne, fire from the throne. I command those spirits roaming around the bodies of God's people. One, two, three, go, go, go. Go, go. Go now. Leave their bodies. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, sisters, lift your hands. I want to pray a very powerful prayer for our sisters. The devil will prefer to get one woman to ten men because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, no power will stand there. Something is about to jump out of somebody's life. Ah, yeah, yeah. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Let her go right now. Your destiny must open up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Break every chain. Lift your hands, sisters. There are many ladies here under several oppressions. That's why many things are not working. But sisters, as surely as the Lord lives, at the count of three, I'd like you to shout Jesus. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Deliverance for you right now. Deliverance. Help them, my goodness. Please help them. Gates, 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 be broken, gates, be broken, Kapataya, gates, be broken, gates, be broken, gates, be broken. I'm praying it again. Lift your hands. Ay, ay, ay. Every devil that came here with you must let you go. Lift your hands. There are sisters. There is already a programming on your destiny to fail. A programming to be barren. Who is this God that can look into time wherever they are at the count of three? May the power of God fish them out. One, two, three. Take that fire. 
take that fire take that fire i open your destiny every lady every sister you are a gate you are a gate in the realm of the spirit mighty deliverance mighty breakthrough mighty breakthrough mighty breakthrough is over is over is over by the power of the holy ghost over 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 Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for the brothers. Lift your heads. Listen, let me tell you. There is a spirit that makes men not to be productive. Hear me. It's a, it's, it's a mighty deliverance that will happen to many men right now. Pay attention. There are men who are just going old. There's nothing happening in their lives. It's not your fault. There are keys that have been withheld from you. But that thief must be exposed. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Ancestry. That's the first thing we are dealing with the brothers. Brothers, lift your hands. I want to pray. Many of you will be surprised to see what happens. Every spirit of ancestry, every spirit of inheritance over any brother here, stopping his advancement at the count of three, some of you will be very surprised. That fire will come on you. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. That fire. Help them, please. Help them. My goodness. Kaparata kata. Brothers are coming under this unction. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. Help them. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. Hallelujah. God does this all the time. And I don't know why God is doing this again. <laughs> ah. If he did it before, he can do it again. Say Listen, I see something strange happening. Strange happening. Strange happening in the spirit. And I'm seeing the spirit of the Lord moving. And God is saying he's visiting Easternans. Easternans, evil people. That's what I'm seeing. There are altars that need to be broken. Please pay attention. I'm about to pray right now. Wherever they are, always he will do it. You are from the east, get set. Be sensitive. Come on, you shouldn't be doing that. Shaparato kaparatia. Isanans. Lord, wherever they are, it will come like fire on you. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you now. The Spirit of God goes to the east. The Spirit of God goes to the east and is bringing deliverance. Deliverance. Strange deliverance. Ibo people. Strange deliverance by the power of the Holy Ghost is visiting your soil, visiting your foundation, visiting your soil. If it did it before, it could do it again. Same God back then, same God right now. He 
if he did it before. Abia, 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 Abia said, Shakata Barata, Abia, Abia, the Spirit of God is moving across Abia, miracles, breaking foundations. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then. Hallelujah. Many of you wonder why God does these things. There are signs and wonders. He steps into, you will see the testimonies that will come from this thing. Strange visitation. Lift your hands, everybody. Joshua Selman. God be praised. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm walking in the spirit and I see a map. And the Lord is asking me to jump upon it. And I see Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. That's what I see. Right now, Lord, at your word, move. Southern Kaduna. Visiting men and women. That's what the spirit of God is saying. I speak it. I place the word of God upon it. Lord, go to that region right now. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna from Saminaka to Zonkua. Everywhere. Move. Let the power of God touch people. Liberty for territories. Liberty for territories. No matter where you are, I'm telling you, Southern Kaduna, fire is falling. Fire is falling upon your soil upon your soil southern kaduna southern kaduna that's what i see southern kaduna connected to southern kaduna there is a miracle happening altars in southern kaduna i come against you by this apostolic and prophetic mantle leave god's people now Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this operation of the Spirit, I found it working in my life, is powerful. God just calls a territory, and everyone is like a digital spiritual system. It's not something you just do by guesswork. Is the spirit of God. The spirit of God. The spirit of God. God is still touching Kaduna people. I'm still hearing it in my spirit. God is still touching Kaduna people. There's no escape. Any family tied to any altar comes under fire. Any Kaduna family married to Kaduna living in Kaduna state Hallelujah. Please lift your hands while still pray. I want to pray for students now. Something miraculous will happen here now. I want to pray for students because I see conspiracy to short circuit people's performances. I'm going to pray. But there is a God in heaven with an all-seeing eye. And there is an unction he can release. I'm going to pray. Listen, let me tell you. You will be surprised to hear the testimonies that will come. 
the way God is working this night is very supernatural. If the power of God comes upon you, I want you to know that an angel is doing something over your result. Just hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Father, there are people whose results need to be worked upon divinely. And where are they? I see almost 45 people. Right now at the count of three. One. Results. Two. Three. Let the angels begin to move. As they move, it will affect you. As the power of God touches you, your result is being worked upon by the power of the Holy Ghost inside and outside. Results, results. Carry over us. Receiving the mercy of God. Receiving the mercy of God. God upgrading CGPS. Upgrading CGPS. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. CGPS. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Supernaturally. By the creative power of prophecy. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has refused to let you smile. Hear me. That joy and laughter will not come out of your mouth. I stand tonight in the name of Jesus. I bring that thing under fire. Amen. I bring it under fire. Amen. I bring it under fire. Shake ta ta ta. I bring it under fire. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands and be silent if you can. A miracle is happening. A miracle is happening. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing letters in the spirit. And these are employment letters. Hold on. Just keep your hand. Just do what I'm asking you to do. You will be surprised. Many of you for you and for your loved ones. The Lord is just asking. Just lift your hand. Father, at least 17 people. Inside, outside, there are up to five people online. Supernatural jobs. May the angels of breakthrough take this word to the people right now. Right now, right now. Right now, receive it. Receive those letters in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. Receive it in the spirit. In the spirit. For you, for your loved ones. I don't care what they read. I don't care what they have. We give them jobs. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I see at least four people. Three of them are ladies in the congregation. Your mothers are due for promotion. But they've done everything they know to do. As I'm speaking right now, an anointing will come upon you to signify what he's doing to them. Lord, go ahead. Locate them. Promotion. I force it. I force it now. I force that promotion. Take it. Carry it for your mothers. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. The judgment of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for the sick. But, um, There are two women I want to pray for here. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now I know there are many people. Listen. There are two women particularly. One of them the anointing 
Uh, please, no standing for wife, no standing for anybody. If you are not the person, um, sit down. If you are not married, don't come here. Praise God. Please, the two women by themselves, I'm going to pray. That lady, oh, let me let me let me pray for her. that devil. Let her go. Don't disturb us. Don't waste our time. Out, out now. Out in the name of Jesus. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus, you are living. Release her family. Release her destiny right now. The noise maker. Out you go and don't waste our time. In Jesus' name, I set her free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please listen. We are going to pray. For those two women, I don't know if there are here the two of them here. There's one of them. Um, I'm seeing one of them. The anointing of the spirit is going to come upon her. I don't know who that person is, but there's one. Please, we have such people. We have to be fast. If I mention your case once, we give you one minute. There's no response. We have to move so that God can help us. Please, except if they are outside there, then that's all right. A married woman that need the fruit of the womb. We have to pray for them right now. Praise the Lord. How many of us are trusting God for healing miracles in our bodies? Let me see your hands. I know many of our mothers are in this category. No matter what the case is, who is Stand up. Come, go down. The power of God will come upon that person. Please make sure they are married though. Please stand up, stand up, madam. It's okay. Uh, madam, madam, it's okay. Please. Madam, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How many years have you been married? 20 years. 20 years. No child. Look at me. 20 years. Madam. Look at me. Look at me. It's okay. 20 years of marriage. If, if that woman gave birth to a child by now. That's the other person, right? Wariness. Why am I seeing her? I'm seeing chains around her stomach. You must remove it now. Remove it now. You are a devil of darkness. You hear my voice. Take off that chains now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as barrenness, it's nonsense. When a spirit sits on your stomach, there's no way a child will come. If you like, do whatever you go to India and come back, you only waste money. But there is a God, Madam. Please look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you here with your husband? You came here for program. I'm a student here. And you decided to. Where is your husband? He's in Kafancha. We okay. reside in Kafancha. Okay, look at me, madam. A student here. Do you believe God can give you a child? I believe that's why I came. Believe that's why I came. It's okay, it's okay, madam. Look at me. Look at me, madam. Place your hand on your stomach. I want to pray. How many of us believe this woman will come and stand and testify? If you are doubting this, you've not been in Koinonia. Madam, look at me. I want you to shout as loud as you can. I receive. Just shout it. I This God, ba. Let me tell you, that is that is not working in your life does not mean it's not available. I've told you this thing. You have to believe there are dimensions in God. This woman you see will come and stand here with her child. Why is she here, madam? Why are you here? You are married for how many years? Give her the mic. How many years? Ten years. The anointing is on you. Lay your hands on your stomach. Look at me, madam. Shout, I receive, if you believe. I receive! <laughs> <laughs> 
There's something leaving your body now. Let it go. You are a devil. Let her go right now. Something is coming out of your stomach. That's what I'm saying. That's what has stopped your barrenness. Go and have your child. In the name of Jesus. Go and have your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me pray. Madam, make sure you people return with your testimonies. We want to pray. Is your husband here? Husband, please come, sir. I want to pray for you. Marriage is between two people, not three people. I look in the spirit and I'm seeing three people. Somebody is a stranger in this equation. Please come, sir. I'm seeing a third person in the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. I'm seeing a third person in the realm of the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. The devil is a liar. We are going to pray. Please hold your hands together. Just in one of your hands. Yes, I want to pray. Please put your hand on Watch what happens to you. <sighs> there is a name. Oh. There is a name. There is a name. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. There is a name. Let her go. Strangers, Kabataya. What God has joined together and prophesied. That's why I said, hold your hands. Anybody whose hand is not held physically should not be in this equation. Therefore, I prophesy. Any stranger, release what you are putting in a stomach now. I'm seeing a snake. That's what I see in the spirit. I'm looking and I'm seeing a serpent. In the name of Jesus, release her now. Release her now. Kaparatakaya. Marriage was done legally. Therefore, you are an illegal occupant. Release her now. Let there be miracle children. Miracle children. I'm seeing a lady in the crowd. You are standing in for your sister who has been married for five years. Who is that? I want to pray for that person. Five years. Your sister has been married five years. No child. No child. You are the one. Where is she? What's her name? Deborah. Where is she? She's in Kenya. How many years? Five years. No child. No child. Brother, six years. And you, the devil, wants to give you four years. Or cancel it. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Will you come and change my destiny? My destiny today. Come and change my destiny. Destiny changer, you are a destiny changer. Oh, change my destiny, my destiny, my destiny today. Please don't just come out at will. What's it? Hold on, hold on. Coordinate yourself. Who is this? Hold on, hold on. Leave them, leave them. It's okay. Victor, leave her. It's okay. Calm down. How many years? Huh? Nine years. Where is she? She's in other Mbouchi. Kiki Amata. That is how we imbue. Amen. Why are you here, my dear? She has been coming with scourges. For how many years? Yes. Three years. Her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? Did you hear what I said? I said her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? The man is the head of the family. See, this thing is being done by an anointing. It's not, it's not, it's not joke. It's an anointing. Look at me. Listen, every lady, place your hand on your womb. I want to pray for you. Just, just place your hand and leave it there. Hold on. Not, not for the brothers. Brothers, you don't have a womb. Just calm down. I know I'm praying for the sisters. That's why I'm praying. Because you see, listen. <laughs> just follow what I'm doing. You will be surprised to see what will happen. The Bible, the Bible does not allow you 
to test whether you are pregnant first before you marry. Is that true? So there is no way you know. You just marry and then find out. It's a disaster for a man, a family to pay the price, pay dowry and get married and then there's that nonsense. So lay your hands. I want to pray for you. Let's attack it in advance. If you care for the prayer, lay your hands. For some of you, God is saving you years of misery. I'm seeing a number 21. And this is at least 21 people and families involved. Father, visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. I'm praying a miracle is happening to your womb. Visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. Right now, every thing that wants to plant barrenness in your stomach for every lady here and those watching online I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus my dear look at me hold that baby you hey, Jimmy, please give her that child just hold her so she doesn't fall. Just hold that baby. You are holding this child as a prophetic symbolism for your sister, for you when you get married, and for every other person, and for two other people who are in the congregation. This prophecy is connecting them. Where are they, oh God? Where are they, oh God? The anointing of the Spirit will locate them now. Right now, two of them in the congregation. For this miracle, for this miracle, for this miracle. That is, sir. Please let me talk to you. Just give a few minutes. You and the madam close to you. Mommy, please come. You are an usher, but you are praying. Come. Let God answer your prayers. This lady is talking to the Lord. What was the issue? It's my sister. You are asking the Lord to do what? Later, she has put to bed in time, but none of them is alive. Because I'm seeing a spirit, as soon as she's giving birth, this is like an antelope, it eats the children. As in, it's the child, sometimes most of the children will grow nine months, you give birth, then they will last for only a few minutes and they will die. Hold my hands. Where is she? Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Where is she? What's her name? Ladi. Ladi. Ladi will speak to you. Lay your hand on your stomach. Ladi, in the name of Jesus, we declare that this, this, this frustration is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is how I want to pray for you. Mama. Good evening, ma. Please stand up. Who is the stubborn child that you want God to touch? Lift his picture up. Lift up. Lift up. Lift up. This is your number one prayer. The one you want to marry. Where is the person? The one you want a job for that graduated. Job, job. The one that graduated. The graduates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Henry. Henry. Mama, this is to tell you that God knows your situation. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. This boy needs to be prayed for. So sir. that this boy, so that they will not go and lock him in police station. Yeah? This, I don't know who the boy is, but... Let it stop on, sir. That's what I'm saying, madam. It's okay. You are here for God to visit you. Amen. Who is non so? Non so, non so. I'm hearing the name non so. We are going to pray. Non so, Mama. We are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Eh? Very soon, Solomon. You want to marry? He's want planning to... for his wedding, sir. Okay, it's all right. We'll, we'll pray for him. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama. I pray for you. You came here expecting the power of God to touch exactly. you. Huh? Ah. Yes, sir. Mama, do you want the pain in your body to stop? Yes, sir. You wake yes, up in the Lord. morning and there's severe pain yes, in your Lord. back. Sir, you know about this thing. I know, sir. 
earth. And the Lord is going to do a great miracle for mama. Amen. Because mama, I'm seeing you. You can't wash for long. You bend down to wash and your back is pain. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord who has seen you is going to do a miracle Amen. for you. I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help mama Thank you, in Father. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank Please, you, Father. No, who is this? Huh? No, so, my friend, are you not so? Help the boy, his trouser is removing. Who is that? Who brought him out? Maybe we should help him now. <laughs> Sir, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? I'm the proprietor of his school. I'm a pastor. I'm a civil engineer by trade. You own a school? I do, sir. Primary school? No, sir. Nursery and primary. Yes, sir. You've been afraid to start the secondary school. Seriously, sir. Is that true? I've been afraid. Because what is happening in the primary, up and down, up and down, people yes. are taking their children out of your school. And they're owing money. And they're owing money. And you are trusting God for a miracle. Yes. Because you too, you need a lot of money now. As you are standing here like this, you need money. Very correct, sir. And this money is much. Don't collect loan. Don't collect loan. Loan is a way to die. Don't collect loan. Sir, I want to pray for you. One of the things you are going to start seeing as you minister the word is breakthrough. You will start seeing strange breakthroughs. Amen. In the lives of people. Amen. And then want to pray for your school, sir. Things are going down. Yes. What you need is not money. What you need is very qualified teachers who are really willing to teach. Because the people there, they will come today, a few months, they want to leave. Yes. And when they, you know, they want, I will have to pray for you. Yes. The devil is a liar. Please lift your hands, sir. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing for speed come upon you, sir. Supernatural speed in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and speed for you. Mama, God bless you. Please, who is this? Please, if we have not called your case, just be patient. We are going to pray for the sick now. Why is Mama here? Mommy, please come. Huh? Your son's name is Nonso. What's your name? Nonso. From where? Madam State. You are a student here? No. Dark. Who is Shidi? I'm hearing the name Shidi. 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 Let me pray for the person now. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, what you need, this one is not, I'm not even getting any word for your son or so. What God is saying, I should prophesy to you, is that He's bringing restoration to your life. God is saying, I should tell you. You see that song that I sang at the beginning of the meeting? Yes, we are I'm speaking how, sir. It's finished. That's what God is saying, I should tell you. That He's going to bring restoration to your life. Supernatural restoration right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold my hands. Honestly, I'm not getting any prophetic word for you. But in the name of Jesus, may God step in and do a miracle for you. Come, come and get in something. You need to pray. Huh? You need academic breakthrough. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Please, why are these people here? Huh? John. You are serving in Brussels. Have you started serving? Yes. In the place where? In the Let's pray for you. Father, give him favor. As you go, let there be favor in Jesus' name. Amen. You are what? John. John. Yes. From where? Zaria, I said, Sam, Father John, but since you have come out, let me pray for you. Yeah? Lay your hands on your chest. You love God? Hi. John. John, look at me. Please, God can give you a new beginning. You hear what I'm saying? Please, when I make altar call, John, run and join them. Huh? 
I'm going to pray for you, but that statement you made is not true. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you see, you have to be serious with God. Oh God, help John in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. She's older than she actually is. Huh? And there is a there is there is a medical condition. This is a feminine thing that I'm seeing that is responsible for this. Um can I help, sir? Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, Turen Shima, you, you understand English? I'm seeing happy birthday on top of you, and I'm seeing 50 years. How old are you? Shakaran Kina. I born me on 66. 66. 1966. How old is that? This woman is 50, but she's looking like 70. The devil is a liar. Huh? I'm seeing something. It's not something I can say in the open, but you need to be healed. Madam, this thing started happening to you since soon you were about 17 years. Abune Afara Miki. Look at Tiko. Yes. About 17 years, this thing started. This is a serious woman issue. This is women talk. Father, we cancel this nonsense. In the name of Jesus Christ, it must live in Jesus' name. Beginning from today, experience the goodness of God in Jesus' name. May the Lord favor you too in Jesus' name. We want to pray for the sick now. Please, this is our miracle service. Bear with us. We have to deal with these things. You see that there are so many... There are so many situations. We are praying. Everyone, you can be seated if you can or stand. We are soon going to be done. But I want us to pray. Are we together? Say after me, inside and outside, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please say it like you are serious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare that every closed gate. Every closed standing gate. before my destiny. Under this corporate anointing, swing open now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Please, we are not just whiling away time. Pray, participate in the prayer. Some of us, that's what is that's what is affecting our lives. Every gate, every gate, every gate, every gate. my finances Say in the name of Jesus, I call forth by the power of prayer every helper who will give me access to resources, to opportunities, and to new levels. I call them into my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. This is a powerful prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Hallelujah. 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 I like you to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. As I enter these ember months, I declare that the mystery of divine preservation is upon my life no death no accident no bad news lift your voice and cancel bad news make sure you are praying some of you are just looking pray it's a very serious prayer point 
No bad news. I speak upon my life. The mystery of divine exemption. Outside, outside, don't be tired. You're working out your salvation. We say, I'm trembling. Before we pray on the request, I'd like you to pray and say, In the name of Jesus, Abba. Now, let's be serious. In the name of Jesus, In the name of Jesus. September, September. October. October, November, November. December. Hear my, hear my voice. I speak to you. I speak to you. Deliver, to my life. Deliver to my life. Only blessings. Only blessings. No, pain. no pain. 
no sorrow, no, sorrow. no, regrets. no regrets. Go ahead and prophesy. Release power to your future. Release power to September. You shut your mouth, you shut your destiny. Release power to September. Release power to October. Release power to November. December. No plane crash. No bus crash. No armed robbery. No terrorism. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I declare a covering over me and my family members, wherever they are, the seal of the blood exempts them from tragedy. Listen, I shared some months ago, hold on, I shared some months ago. A vision that the Lord showed me. I'm not one person who will stand and say, I saw this. Sometimes I see these things. I just pray. But it was upon my spirit and I said it. Remember, I spoke about the month of September. Everything you see us do here is prophetic. As you speak, it looks like you are joking. But you are releasing power to your future. He said, declares thou that he might be justified. Hast thou commanded thy morning? You don't sit down and it delivers everything to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say in the name of Jesus. The seal of the blood is upon my life and my family members. Therefore, every spirit of death and loss and disaster must pass over my life and my family. Lift your voice and pray. No, not upon my life. Not upon my loved ones. They are sealed by the mystery of the blood. No accident. No accident. No death. No obituary. No plane crash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to turn your request to testimonies. Go ahead. All those online, follow us. We are praying. You submitted your requests and we are praying. Every request. Oh God, you have produced testimonies. Shaba katata. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. Let there be miracles, testimonies, breakthroughs. Turn around impossible situations, oh God. Let the barren come back to children. Let the poor return rich. Let the captive be set free. Let sinners come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Let your breath be delivered. Let the sick be healed. Let jobless people return to jobs. Building projects completed. Spiritual lives be fired. Pray, pray. I'm going to prophesy upon this request and I want us to agree with a resounding amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare, I use this as a point of contact. Lord, there are so many requests here representing the challenges in people's lives. Some for jobs, some for marriages, some for children some for breakthroughs some for study um, scholarships others for help 
others for reconciliation others for souls others for financial prosperity and breakthrough others for restoration some for deliverance others for healing lord i pray in the name that is above all names we have a covenant of answered prayers with you therefore lord arise as a mighty man and turn every prayer request to a testimony in the name of jesus lord we pray for all those who have sent their requests on facebook on twitter on any other platform lord in the name of jesus give them strange visitations strange visitations from tonight strange visitations and lord for every request that made it to this altar i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ and i pray answer everyone in the name of jesus Turn every request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I really apologize. Let me prophesy over our lives. Do you know why prophecy is very powerful? Most of the testimonies that you hear, listen. Most of the testimonies that you hear are as a result of these prophetic words. Are we together? There are needs that God may not reveal and time may not permit to be able to extensively deal with. However, prophecy is powerful. It says in Numbers chapter 6 how that the priest will bless them and speak upon their life. There is something about a prophetic word coming upon your life. Those who know this, that is their edge in the spirit, have received it and it has produced dramatic results in their lives. Those who are careless about it like they are about many other things never really get to receive anything. Let me tell you, even if it's an impartation, even if it's a dimension of breakthrough, for as long as you stepped your feet here and for all the thousands following us online, connect, connect. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. It says you have turned my mourning into dancing. And you have turned my sorrow into joy. I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy like you have never experienced from January till now. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Joy like you have never experienced. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Hear me. I speak to your hands. Whoever is not doing anything here. Because God said be fruitful. I don't care whether it's a job, a business. I don't care whether you're a student, a graduate, a retiree. Whoever is having an idle hand between now and September miracle service. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. In the name of Jesus. Not something that will mock you. Something that will bring results. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I put pressure on your destiny helpers. I put pressure on them. May they respond to you. I put pressure on their spirits. May they arise and help you. May they arise and help you. Hallelujah. Any situation in your life that is a recurrent decimal, it comes as though the breakthrough is coming, then the situation repeats itself. I prophesy no more. No more. No more. No more. In the name of Jesus, no more. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen. Someone is speaking here like Mary and saying, how shall these things be? Lord, I, is it true that you will turn my life? I stand in the name of Jesus and I pray. A turn around that will surprise you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A dramatic turn around. A dramatic turn around. Hallelujah. 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 In the
the last one month of my life, God has brought breakthroughs and things to my life that I have always believed God. But there is something God can do in your life that will make you fear Him. Not just believe Him. I prophesy to someone here. In the name that is above all names. That flight in the spirit that God can take a man and bring acceleration and not just surprise you but even make you fear. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone in business here and it's no diving. Things are not happening. You turn everywhere. You've done everything you know to do. You need the prophetic. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. Every dream that is still on paper, no finances, no grace to bring it out of paper. You have been writing things for donkey years, but the grace to put it at work, I declare between now and next next month miracle service bring evidence bring evidence bring evidence bring results bring results in the name of Jesus anyone called jobless in this place that you have done everything to do including giving money to people and they have not brought jobs to you I don't know how God will do it but this mountain mover that can shake every mountain I pray may he give you not just a job a miracle job miracle job hallelujah every family here that is stuck in one place you try to rise something brings you down you try to rise something brings you down now I prophesy to you the grace for rising receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for rising receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for rising receive it in the name of Jesus every embargo of bad luck upon your life it works for others until it gets to your point and people change their mind I declare in the name of Jesus in a way you have never seen favor and help may you experience that throughout the month of september hallelujah a dimension of anointing a dimension of wisdom that you have never seen receive it in the name of jesus receive wisdom in the name of jesus receive wisdom in the name of jesus and i pray for you everything that needs to be broken in your life habits and encumbrances that tie you down i command that today is their barrier today is their barrier today is their barrier hallelujah i want to prophesy for someone who has never stood here to testify in the name of jesus whatever has stopped you from climbing this altar to testify i curse that spirit right now I cast that spirit right now. I cast that spirit right now. I cast that spirit right now. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak to you. Everything that makes money run away from your hands. Money has a spirit. You have obeyed kingdom laws, but this thing is not just coming. You would try and labor and labor and nothing will come. These hands that are stretched towards me, as I stretch my hands back to you, by the mystery of divine supply, may you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold an amount you have never held in your life before. Hallelujah. Two more prayers and we are done. I pray for your spiritual life. Everything that is alive grows. If you are not growing spiritually, something is wrong. 
And the measure, there are two indices to measure your spiritual growth. Number one, your degree of conformity to the image of the Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom alongside their operation. How to make them produce consistently. I pray for you this month. As we round up this month into the next month. Keys that your hands have never held spiritually. Hold them right now in Jesus name. Keys, mysteries that you have not known. Or mysteries you have had and have not been able to handle. May God give it to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Finally, this is the prayer that I pray for people with all my heart. He said, you shall anoint, listen, you shall anoint Aaron and his sons. Right? And then he said, you shall take some of your honor and put upon him. How do you take honor and put upon him? Honor. The spiritual mystery that turns a man to a celebrity. Not by walking it. Honor is when men have the capacity to discern and reward what you represent. Hallelujah. I was coming from Abuja today and I stopped in Kaduna at a particular computer outfit just to buy, to quickly buy a laptop and proceed. And as soon as I stepped there, I entered, I saw all of them looking at me. They started jumping as if it was a crusade. Apostle Joshua Selman, I was so embarrassed. They ran, went and called their father, the owner of the place. Uh, they call it Micro Manor in, in, in Kaduna. You know? And they were jumping and they looked. They said, ah, we, you have been blessed by your teachings. You know, God has lifted us. You can imagine the things that have happened. And they said, which laptop are you buying? And all of that. And I looked at them. I had to just run away and go out. Because I didn't want a situation where they are doing business. They carry something that is so costly and cheap. Let me tell you, honor is more than money. Oh. Don't be deceived. Money is very finite. Honor is when men rise up to solve your problems for you. They rise up and make it their business to see you succeed. May somebody here receive that mantle. May somebody here receive that mantle. May a pastor here receive that mantle. May a businessman receive that mantle. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Hallelujah. When you are minding your business and some people are talking and say, how do we bless this lady? As if they owe you. They get up and plan governmental figures discussing how to lift you. And people say, what is the big deal? There is a big deal. It's a mantle. Please, I want to pray it finally. I know, I know that our time is gone. But I want you to receive this thing. There are people here carrying it bodily. When you carry it, it speaks. See, let me tell you, the true proof of sonship is a replication of grace. A replication of grace. A replication that you are carrying something you know, the devil knows, and heaven knows that this is like an address. It will cause good things to look for you. I want to pray for you. Honor makes your life easy. Otherwise, you will suffer for anything. Everything. You are in trouble, you pay for it alone. There is a mystery of honor. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I pray for you, my God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your people in this great house. You have placed your mantle of honor upon this house and by grace upon my life. I'm praying right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Ay, 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 ay. In a dimension you have never seen. Or for those of you who have seen a measure of it in a higher dimension... Receive that mantle of honor. 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 Keep standing everybody. I want to make an altar call now. Please no moving around. Let's honor what God is doing. No sitting down. Just five minutes and we're done. Thank you so much for your patience. We stretch the time quite um, but I think that it's worth it if you pay that much price and you come back with tearsome testimonies it's a wise baguette 
there are still people under the anointing. God is still doing things. And even after the service, God is still going to be touching people. But very quickly, I want to make a call. There are people outside all the overflows, any of them. And there are people following us online. You are saying, man of God, I heard you speak. And whilst you spoke, the Holy Spirit convicted my heart and told me it's time to make a commitment or a rededication. For some of you, this is your first time making a genuine decision for Jesus. Others, you have made that decision, but you are rededicating yourself. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front. Make sure that you do not leave this place without making that decision. God bless you. There are people coming. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you, young and old. Clear the way for them. Please, if you are coming from outside, I want you to save time. Double up, hurry up and come. God bless you. Alana Bakasuchi Ata Alana Bakasuchi Ata Keep coming Alana Bakasuchi Ata Keep coming quickly, please. hold on thank you so much for coming men and women people who love god listen no matter what has happened in your life no matter what you have done i don't want you to stand here feeling guilty rebels don't come to god they run away from god so that you are here in his presence some of you are rededicating your life some of you are doing so for the first time it doesn't matter what category i want you to lift your right hand please if you are still coming join them very quickly lift your right hand and say after me very clearly you are not reciting a poem say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you died for me to prove your love for me and now i give my heart to you to prove my love for you I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm above sin. I'm above Satan. I'm above the flesh. In the name of Jesus, from today, I declare that I have the life of God. I'm a child of God. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I am victorious. In the name of Jesus, keep your hands lifted, please. Father, thank you for these ones. You have drawn them by your wisdom. Let today be the beginning of, of great days in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that everything they have laid at your altar will remain there and never cling to their lives again. Open them up to a new dimension of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come into the lives of every one of these precious people. In the name of Jesus use them for your glory give them tearful testimonies in the name of jesus i pray amen thank you so much for making this decision now i'd like you to follow this gentleman and the lady waving their hands they will have your details in a minute and then you'll be back to your seat god bless you honor them koinonia dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.